The views, information, and opinions expressed during the following program are solely those of the individuals involved and do not necessarily represent the views of Access Communications, its representatives, or its employees. To Woodley, who is all by himself, and he's going deep for the touchdown! Touchdown, Thunder! And it's a fumble! Oh my god! It's intercepted! Look at the swash buckler! Then he fires quickly, it's gone! The ball is loose, and it's recovered by the sun! He is met immediately! Oh yeah! Touchdown, sun! Will the sun set on Regina's championship hopes, or will there be a thunderous celebration in November? Hello again, everybody, and welcome to the 114th edition of the Canadian Bowl, the longest uh, standing and oldest championship game in Canadian football history. It is our distinct pleasure to bring you this broadcast on Access Now Sports and on CJFL TV as well. My name is Brennan McGuire alongside Ryan Hall, and Ryan... This is a big game for a lot of players, and so often the championship game isn't necessarily a reflection of the two best teams in the country. Nobody can say that today. No, absolutely. These two teams, uh, especially the Thunder, had to beat a lot of really quality teams out of the Prairie Conference to get here. Uh, Kelowna beat all comers out in the BC Conference and then took on St. Clair last week and didn't have a hard time with them. So I, I absolutely agree we've got the top two. A big part of the story, too, the graduating players and... Uh, uh, country's top passer Carter Shuchuk today for the Regina Thunder playing in his last game and he's going to be very important and also we have to make note of the fact they don't have their regular backup Carter Moberg so it's essential that he stays healthy. Well Carter Shuchuk is the kind of guy that can make all the throws he's good at the short ones he's great at picking those intermediate zones apart and he can hit the deep ball as well it's going to be tough with the ball cold and slippery today but when they put the ball in the air Carter can make an accurate throw. Another guy wrapping up his junior career the pride of Winyard Saskatchewan and the best hair in all the nation Ryland Sokol there you see him wearing number 80 this will be his swan song coming into the year he was a top ranked national player. And Sokol's been a key player for the Thunder all year. Uh, in the last game in the PFC Championship against Saskatoon, he got rolled up on with a lower leg injury. So we'll have to see how he does today, but it's good to see him out on the field dressed and ready to go. And going up against them today in those beautiful pumpkin orange unis, Dominic Britton, the stud quarterback for the Okanagan Sun. And if he hasn't played in cold weather before, he's going to get, I don't want to say a rude awakening, but he's going to get an education having to go through it today. Dominic Britton's a great athlete. Uh, he's got a good arm. He can throw deep, and he likes to throw short. He has kind of an interesting, almost a baseball shortstop type delivery, but he really gets rid of the ball quickly, and he can use his feet. Look at him on quarterback sneaks and bootlegs. He can get in the open and get some yards. And if the Sun are going to have any success offensively or on special teams, it'll likely land on the shoulders of that man there, Mike O'Shea 2.0, the son of Winnipeg Blue Bomber head coach Michael O'Shea, eight days before his dad might coach on the same field for national championship. He goes for it today. What a story. That's a pretty cool thing, really, to think about that. Yeah, Mike O'Shea, just a fantastic athlete, uh, a second-team All-Canadian as a receiver and first-team All-Canadian as a kick returner. So the Sun is going to be looking to get the ball in his hands as much as they can today. You've coached in a lot of games at the high school level. You've played at games at this level as well. And uh, it doesn't just make a big difference on the passing game. What about other elements like the kicking game? I mean, the ball's going to be a lot harder. Can you think in your mind how much field goal range this knocks off, 5, 10 yards, etc.? It's pretty tough to gauge. And even though the wind doesn't look real strong you get down at field level it is deceptively strong yeah and the wind is tricky in the stadium because of the way it's it's shaped kind of in a bowl and the winds coming from the south it kind of swirls around and so it depends on which hash marks you're on which way the wind is blowing uh, on the sideline on the far sideline with the suns it's quite calm on the near sideline on the thunder bench it's pretty windy so it really uh, it really will be different depending on uh, what part of the field the kickers or quarterbacks are in these two teams, large, I should say these two cities, played to arguably the greatest Canadian Bowl finish ever 25 years ago uh, this week. And we expect another classic today. When we come back, the opening ceremony and opening kickoff of the 114th edition of the Canadian Bowl here on Access Now Sports and CJFL TV. It's the Capital Clearout at Capital GMC. We're clearing out all in-stock 2022s or beat the rush and custom order the perfect brand new 2023 model for you. Capital Clearout at Capital GMC. CapitalGMC.ca 
frosty November afternoon, and I know a lot of these football fans wouldn't have it any other way, although some of them might be rethinking their choices about sitting in the stands today. We've got the window open up here in the booth with the cameras getting a better shot of things here at beautiful Mosaic Stadium. This will be the first ever Canadian Bowl played in this stadium. Of course, there were many games played in the old Taylor Field, and we're just getting set for the opening ceremony. You can see the Okanagan Sun over on that far sideline. Uh, that game in 1997 played in Kelowna and everybody was wearing short sleeves. There were some <laughs> younger fans with no shirts. I don't think we're going to see that today. No, I know we've got some viewers from across the country looking at uh, Okanagan's roster. They've got players from Ontario right to the West Coast. So, uh, yeah, you, those of you that are not here enjoying our nice Saskatchewan November weather, you'll be able to hopefully get a feel for it by the players on the field and all those hardy fans in the stands. We'll join the pregame pageantry right now. It's a dear member of its family. Don McCauley, father of Thunder head coach Scott McCauley, passed away with his family by his side after a courageous battle with Parkinson's. Don was a huge supporter of the Regina Thunder and an avid football fan. After the PFC final, the Thunder players presented the game ball to coach McCauley to give to his dad. Don passed away wearing his favorite Regina Thunder shirt. Our thoughts and prayers are with Pat, Scott, Susan, Chase, Matthew, and all of the Macaulay family. This one's for you, Don. Please rise if you are able and join us in a moment of silence in recognition of both Remembrance Day and Mr. Don Macaulay. Please remain standing for our national anthem. Presented by Desjardins Financial, she's been singing for us since she was nine years old and now celebrating her 10th year as the Regina Thunder national anthem singer. Here to lead us in O Canada is Caden Pelzer. Take it away, Caden. O Canada, our home and native land, true love in all of us command with glowing hearts we see thee rise the true nor strong and free from far and wide O oh Canada we stand on guard for With that, the first ever Canadian Bowl Championship game played at beautiful new Mosaic Stadium will get underway momentarily. There you see a very nice crowd and many coming in on a charter from Kelowna, uh, coming in to brave the prairie late November, mid-November, I should say, temperatures. And uh, a lot of orange in that crowd. And there we welcome all the viewers watching on a watch party in beautiful Kelowna, B.C. We're happy to have you along on the CJFL TV feed. And I know we'll get many shots of you anytime there's something to celebrate for your Okanagan son during this broadcast here in Regina as this is a national broadcast. We'll go to the coin toss right now. My name is JP Chorney. I'll be the referee for today's game. My partner, 
Michael Claussen. Who's going to be speaking for your team? Okay. This is the coin. Okanagan will have the choice. That will be a heads. That is a tail. That is a head. That is a tail. What is your call? Tails has been called. It is a head. You have won the toss. Regina will defer. Kick receive, choose an end. You have chosen to receive. What end do you want to put? Okanagan will receive. Have a great game. And there you have it. The Thunder win the coin toss. Regina Mayor Sandra Masters that you see at the bottom of the screen with a little bit of mojo for the Thunder with the coin toss. They win the coin toss. They defer to the second half. And the Sun elect to receive the opening kickoff. And it will be kicked, uh, as you see, from left to right, north to south here at Mosaic Stadium. And it, when you look down, you see um, the ribbons, I want to say, on the goalposts moving around a little bit. Looks like it's maybe going a little bit to the north. And here, here's a shot of, and this is from the Thunder perspective. The very first game that we did way back on our August the 14th, uh, a game at Libel Field, 27 Celsius. You see it was a very humid afternoon. And today, it's a Celsius swing of 39 degrees and a wind chill of minus 20. So it gets cold in a real hurry here in Canadian football on the prairies. And uh, it's not like the old Taylor Field, Ryan Hall, where it was a wind tunnel that just cut like a knife because this, the field was, uh, the one end zone was the northwest, the other one was the southwest. Here it's more of a bowl north to south, and it swirls a little bit more. Right. It, yeah, the wind is going to be a factor, as we talked about in the in our pregame lead-up. But you know what? It's been a long two weeks for both of these teams. They are just dying to get this game going. You know, you think about that two weeks, it's great physically for the teams to recover and feel fresh. But mentally and emotionally, it's so hard, especially the second week. All week, both these teams have just been dying to get this game going. So finally, we're moments away. They can finally let out all of the, the emotion and aggression and competitiveness that they've been bottling up for the last two weeks. And this first quarter of this championship game is brought to you by Vintage Final, your one-stop gift shop. And everybody excited for the opening kickoff. Eric Maximek, who will kick in his final game as a member of the Regina Thunder. And there's two men deep, including the big star, Mike O'Shea, as he'll tee it up at his own 45-yard line. And with a little hop step, and they're going to try. It looks like a surprise on side, but it's caught immediately. And I think down there, that looks like number 46 coming down with the ball. And that is fielded over on the far sideline. And that's where Okanagan will set up at their own 42-yard line, first and 10. Yesterday, I talked to Dave Jackson, one of the assistant coaches for the Thunder, and asked him if they were going to do any special, you know, kind of different kicks to try and keep the ball out of the hands of those dynamic returners for Kelowna. So there's our answer on the opening kickoff. We'll get our first look at Dom Britton, the number two passer in the BC Conference, checking in for the Okanagan Sun. He takes the snap, looks to the near side, has a man, is complete, and he finds room, and there's going to be a first down for the Okanagan Sun, and that's... Uh, Nathan Tonaguy, who picks up the first down right around midfield. And that's just your, your typical play one from the Okanagan Sun. They love to just have those short little passes out to the flats, usually a quick out, or in that case, a little bit of a hit screen out wide. Get the quarterback an easy completion, easy catch, and then those blockers for, for the Okanagan Suns do a great job getting the extra yards for the ball carrier. And there we had some footage of the last national championship for Okanagan in 2000, a victory over the Saskatoon Hilltops. Britton takes the snap, looks for a man, and it's incomplete. Nobody was looking in the direction. I think he got rid of the ball a little bit sooner than any of the receivers were expecting. Stephen Smith, you saw patting his own head, thinking he may have had an interception if he had maybe put his head up a little bit sooner. Yeah, that's that quick release that I talked about earlier with Britton, and he was looking for O'Shea on, a, on the seam, and the read by Britton was right. He, he threw the ball in between the zones where, where O'Shea would have had it, but O'Shea was looking to take it deep and try and get one over the top early in the game. So second and 10 here for Dom Britton and this Okanagan offense from midfield, early stages of this first quarter. Britton out of shotgun. We saw early movement along the line. I think it's going to go against Okanagan, but they're pointing toward the Thunder, so maybe not. Depends if he was drawn off. Yeah, Miles Bisterson definitely jumped early, but like you said, not sure if he if he went there because he saw movement or if he just listened to the quarterback's cadence. So 
they're talking about it, so maybe they've got different uh, different perspectives on both sidelines from the officials. They're trying to figure it out. The head referee is J.P. Chorney, and also on the crew, the umpire Mike Klassen. And we'll get referee Chorney's call. Oh, time count Looks violation. Like they're call time count. Yeah, against the Interesting. Sun. Interesting. Boy, I didn't see that at all. No, <laughs> I wasn't paying attention to the <laughs> play clock, and it didn't seem like Okanagan, Okanagan was taking five a long yards. time. Repeat, second down. So that's going to march him back five yards. So this is going to set up a second and 15, which is very manageable if you're the Thunder defense, you would think, but looks like an obvious passing situation, but you never really know. And we're there on the field. Okanagan has a, a pretty good breeze at their back, so passing the ball shouldn't be too much of a problem. Out of shotgun formation, Brenton fakes the pass and instead he hands it off to Javon Garwood and who gets a nice five yards but just back to the original line of scrimmage. It'll be third and ten in a punting situation here for Okanagan. Yeah, they're going to look to get the ball into Javon Garwood's hands. His off team, all Canadian, uh, one of the top running backs in, in, the, can in, in the country and a really dynamic player that can run through tackles. But in that case, the Thunder did a good job bringing him down stopping him for about a five yard gain. Isaac Wagner set to uh, do the punt here back at his own 40 yard line. And the sun's tricky here. We've got this low November sun shining right into the returner's eyes from this angle. So we saw that a couple of weeks ago. Sometimes they had trouble finding the ball. Isaac Wagner gets the punt away and it's picked up by Justin Rieger. He stands around it, grabs it. He's gonna scamper over to the near sideline and trying to follow his blocks. And down he goes just inside his own 40 yard line. I think they're pretty happy with the return. He got about 15 yards and we'll do a quick look back here. Um, this will be a shot at the 2013 Canadian Bowl. This is the first ever championship for the Regina Thunder. And that was a victory over the Vancouver Island Raiders at Taylor Field. And so far the only championship for the Regina Thunder, national championship I should say. Here's quarterback Carter Shuchuk in his final ever game. He hands off the ball and picking up a few yards, Rylan Leichert, who we always knew he was an effective back and he's the head of this three-headed running back monster for Regina, absolutely exploded in the PFC semifinal victory over the Winnipeg uh, Rifles with that 390-yard rushing game, dispelling any myth that the Thunder needed to win through the air. Well, Ryland Likert out of Porcupine Plains, Saskatchewan, he has just emerged in the playoffs as an absolute dominant force running the ball. Carter Shuchuk in shotgun formation. He's got three receivers on his right side, and he's looking over the middle, and that's going to fall incomplete. He was looking for Isaac Ford. I thought maybe we were going to see a flag, but no, it's just going to fall incomplete, and that is going to bring up second, and, sorry, third and six, and the Thunder will bring on the punting unit. Yeah, the Suns play a lot of zone defense, so they're going to have some guys deep. They play uh, a lot of cover four, actually, where they've got four players deep, and so they, and they've got good athletes. They like to just drop back and then react really aggressively to the ball, so that's why there's that, that uh, close coverage when that ball came down. So now it'll be the Thunder's turn to punt, and Eric Maximuk will line up just inside his own 30-yard line, and we'll see... We haven't seen the return game for Okanagan yet because on the first one they did the surprise onside. And this is fielded by, looks like O'Shea on the near side and getting around one man, not another. And to check that, uh, not O'Shea, the second kick returner, Kamar Bishop, brings it up close to midfield. They're gonna spot it at the 52 yard line. That's where the Sun will scrimmage first and 10. I'm not sure if that's where Maximuk wanted to put the ball. He really put it right down the middle of the field, which opens up a lot of options, and it makes it tougher on your kick, kick coverage team. So, uh, so I think he wanted, wants to try and get that a little up more to the sidelines. Dom Britton in shotgun formation. You can hear the Thunder fans trying to make noise. Looked like he might have trouble with the snap. Hands it to Garwood, who cuts left, and it completely fooled the Thunder defense, and that's going to be an Okanagan first down as he rumbles down to about the 42-yard line of Regina. The Thunder were in zone defense on that one, playing cover three, and they didn't have anybody on this weak side with contain coming in. So that should that was a great block, uh, actually by O'Shea. He came in and made a great block on uh, number 52, Kent Neffa, and that's what sprung Garwood to the outside there, got him a first down. Star-studded front line for the Thunder with Reed Rabbits, Luke Turner, and Reese McCormick. Snap to Brenton, fakes the handoff. This time he goes outside, it is complete, but they're gonna be stopped just short of the first down 
And over on that far side, that's Nathan Tonagai. Once again, a very positive pickup on first down. That'll bring up second and two. Yeah, Tonagai had a lot of catches a couple of weeks ago in the national semifinal, so he's a the guy they're going to go to a lot. That time, uh, the defensive back in coverage, that was Adam King, got caught looking at the quarterback and lost touch with Tonagai. He's got to make sure when the ball's in the air, he's got to find the man. Don Britton with lots of options here. He's going to throw it, and it's incomplete. Nice play at the very end by Avery Wagner to break that up. Yeah, that was a great aggressive play uh, out on the corner there by Wagner. He saw that quick slant coming, and he just jumped it without hesitation. That almost was close to an interception because he was so aggressive on his jump there, but separated the ball from the, from the man, and that's what you need on that second down play. Noah Wymack, the number two receiver, the intended man on that play. And here we have a third and short, and the Sun are either going to go for it or try to draw him off, and they're going to go for it. And Britton's going to roll right. He throws it, and that's incomplete. That's going to be a turnover on downs. So that's one of the Suns' favorite plays. I'm a little surprised they went to it this early. When they go in short yardage, they have an eye formation with an offset line, which means they've got an extra offensive lineman on the strong side, and then they only have one offensive lineman, and then the tight end, number 84, he does that release, thinking that he won't get picked up, and then the quarterback just boots out after faking the handoff. Usually he's open if the if the coverage is undisciplined, but that time the Thunder were all over it. Big stop on third down. Fascinating turn of events early in this championship game, probably in that spot where it's too far to do a field goal, and they elected to go for it on third and short. Here's a handoff up the middle, and that's going to be a gain of about eight yards, and getting the carry there for Regina, the running back, Ryland Leichert. That'll bring up second and short for Regina. Yeah, great pickup on first down to get that eight yards. Uh, it's it's almost hard to believe that the Thunder have become a running team because they've always been a passing team, but just in the last couple of games in the playoffs, they've decided we are going to run the ball. I've been trying to help the commentators, and I keep telling them that they're pass, 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 and that just hasn't been the story here in the postseason. And here's a handoff on the far side, and that's going to be a loss on the play, and it looks like Ryland Leichert once again. There's a flag on the sideline here, so probably an offside or an illegal procedure. It's going to be against Okanagan. Okay, so it must be an offside, so it'll be an automatic first down for the Thunder. They'll take that five yards because, as you said, they didn't get any yards on the run on that second down handoff. We'll get the official call. Offside, Okanagan, five yards, first down. So that's a killer for the Sun. Trying to get off the field on second and two. They get the stop. Well, it looks like he was just lined up on side the defensive yeah. end over on the far sideline there. Didn't, didn't help give them that at all. Yard. Didn't help them at all. And a fresh set of downs for the Regina Thunder offense and offensive coordinator Stefan Ensign to dial something up. He's going to go to Likert again, who is stopped dead in his tracks right around the line of scrimmage. I think we'll call that no gain. Second and 10 for the Thunder. We're trying to ground and pound in this championship game. That's been the theme of this playoff run so far. Yeah, definitely. They've got a game plan and they're going to stick to it. So good initial block out there by number 77 for the Thunder, Riley Schick. But uh, coming in from the linebacker depth, they just made that great tackle. So no gain on that first down run. Big man up front, Riley Schick at left tackle, Pete Tuoloma at left guard, Max McFadden at center, Nick Mikowski at right guard, and Connor Klassen at the right tackle. Shuchuk steps up, and he's going to throw it over the middle. And that's complete. Isaac Ford for the first down, the Luther Lion connection, doing it here in this championship game. There is a penalty flag way back behind the play. Yeah, and I don't think that's a roughing. I think that's probably a holding penalty just by where it is. And one of the one of the Suns players is signaling against the Thunder. So, yeah, when uh, Shuchuk broke contain there, one of the offensive linemen must have got caught with their hands holding on too long. Oh, looks like unnecessary roughness. Connor Klassen looks like was a guilty party wearing number 66. Seemed to be right in the middle of the commotion. And we might see it better on this replay. And 66, he was over on the right side. And so maybe Whoa. throwing him down, I don't know. That's uh, borderline. That's a little bit best. of a soft yeah. call, I would say. Yeah. And we don't. After yards were gained at point ball dead, unnecessary roughness. Regina, 66, 15 yards, first down, 10 yards. 
So basically, they're going to give them from the time where the play ended, they're going to march it back 15 yards. I think I have that right, yeah. and it's a yeah. fresh set of downs. That's so. the big thing. It just it becomes a first down for the Thunder. They, they maintain possession. But, I mean, you see offensive linemen finishing blocks like that all the time. You know, it's not like he body slammed the guy or anything like that. So, yeah, I don't know. That one might go to head office and... <laughs> So Carter Shuchuk working out of the gun on their own 49 yard line and they're gonna hand the ball off. This is gonna be Ryland Likert again and he's gonna lose yardage on this play. One or two yards, they're gonna spot him back at the 47. So this will bring up second and 12 for the Thunder who have actually had pretty good success throwing the football but they're gonna commit to the run game and it's not as simple. Like if you're gonna run the ball, it's not an idea, it's a commitment. Yeah. We've seen the Thunder Great play by Romario Reed there out of Calgary. Just came knifing through the blockers, made that great stick. Nice, low, solid tackle on the backfield. Shotgun snap, grab by Shuchuk. Steps up, throws the pass out of the reach. He was looking for Isaac Ford, the old Luther line connection. That'll fall incomplete and set up a punt situation. He's been looking for Ford a lot in the early going. Yeah, I mentioned the zone defense that the Suns play, and they, they play it, the way they play it is quite different than what the, the Thunder are used to playing against against someone like the Hilltops, whose zones are, are really predictable. They do very uh, precise zone drops. With the Suns, they almost kind of drift back, so there's not the same kind of windows that Shuchuk is maybe used to finding because the windows are a little bit smaller here against the Suns. Kamar Bishop and Mike O'Shea deep to receive this punt from Eric Maximuk. And... He'll move a line drive type over to the near side. O'Shea is watching it bounce. He'll pick it up, scamper up the sideline and tiptoe as far as he can get before he's pushed out of bounds at the 45 yard line. And the man pushing him out for Regina as we get a look down there, as we'll get a look at the replay, but that was uh, Matthew Schill on special teams pushing him out of bounds. The Sun will scrimmage at their own 44 yard line. And, and we'll get a look too as well to Mike O'Shea. Uh, big storyline is the fact that he's playing in this game and his dad will be here maybe, maybe. in days time. Maybe, that's a big maybe, isn't it? Yeah, against BC, they look pretty good. And Britton fires it over to the far side. That is, oh, they're gonna say it hit the turf. I don't know. I might have to see the replay on that. Well, I guess that official that made the call is a little closer than we Just are. Just a little bit, yeah. <laughs> the receiver had his back to him, so I'm not sure. But we should get a good shot of it here. Uh, it I, like, think, I think it skipped. I think it hit the turf. He yeah. had some help from the, from the carpet. Yeah. But again, those are the plays that Britton likes. He likes those short, quick, uh, underneath passes, and then let the blockers do the work, and the ball carriers follow the blocks. Dom Britton in shotgun formation again, and a lot of teams at this level do every play in shotgun formation, and we've seen a lot of that from the Sun. Britton going deep, and that's gonna fall incomplete as it goes just off the intended receiver's fingertips over on the far side, and that's Mike O'Shea once again, so that'll set up third and long, and a punt situation for the Okanagan Sun. Yeah, usually O'Shea's lined up on the boundary side, but that time they've got him over on the field where there's way, way more space. And that's actually a beautifully placed ball by Britt and put it in his hands over the outside shoulder where there's no way the coverage could get to it. And the Thunder were bringing some pressure on that one. I, I wasn't sure they'd blitz very much this game uh, just with the quick release that Britton has, but, but that was a good call to blitz because that time Britton was dropping back and took a little bit more time in the pocket. We just know the man on the left is watching from Winnipeg in anticipation of tomorrow's East Western final, pardon me. And here's the punt, and there's going to be a penalty against the Regina Thunder. Depends if it'll be roughing or contacting the kicker. But Isaac Wagner was tripped up, and that's going to be a penalty against Avery Wagner. Yeah, I don't know how he didn't block that because he got in there so quickly. Uh, he had a great angle. If it's contacting, I think they'll be okay. If it's roughing, Okanagan will be a first down. Whoa. Offense is back on the field for Okanagan. Yeah. Contacting the kicker, Regina, number five, 10 yards, first down. That's a 10 yard penalty and it was third and 10, so that's all. Oh boy. That's like an was, unfortunate miscue. And I mean, you know, sometimes it's just unavoidable. And I know you coach them to run past, but it looked like he was trying to do that. And you get that close to somebody, I mean, sometimes it's just inevitable. You're gonna yeah, it's just that curved run that Wagner needs to make. He just needs to curve more in front of the punter. Dom Britton hands the ball off. And this is Garwood cutting outside. A big gainer and a first down for Kelowna. Okanagan, I should say. And that's a pickup of 17 yards just inside. No, 16 yards, pardon me. 
They'll spot it right at the Regina 40-yard line. They're having a lot of success running to the boundary. And again, that outside linebacker for the Thunder, number 52, that was uh, Kent Neffa. He got sealed in again, and that's what Gar with all that space outside. Nice play selection here for the Okanagan play calling. And Garwood's going to get outside, and he finds an alley. That looked like the Packer sweep. They opened up a <laughs> hole that you could drive a mini truck through. And that's going to be not a first down, eight yards. Pretty close, though. Yeah. Yeah, Stephen Smith made the play, and it looked like he was kind of flat on his scrape. If he would have played a little more downhill, been a little more aggressive, might have been able to stop that a bit sooner. But, yeah, the, the Suns have got a nice drive going here. Driving into Regina territory and on the fringes of field goal range. Britton will take the snap. He gives it to Garwood. Doesn't have quite so much success. Seems like Garwood's having a lot more success running outside, but they didn't need much there. They only needed a couple, and he gets the first down. Yeah, Garwood's not a big guy at all. He's quite small, uh, you know, height-wise, but he runs tough. He's not afraid to run inside. I, I think he actually prefers it, but as we've seen, he's done really well outside. Will be interesting to see what uh, kind of field goal range these teams try with uh, the ball being a little, little bit tougher and the footing not being as sure as it normally is. Garwood gets the ball, and he cuts outside, and he's met by a host of Regina Thunder tacklers including the big linebacker, number 42, Stephen Smith. Yeah, now that time Stephen Smith played downhill. He came after the blocker, fought through it, got into the backfield and made a great tackle. And that's what they're going to have to do because those, those Okanagan receivers are really good at blocking downfield. They're physical. They've got good size and good length. And you can't dance with them. You've got you to really be physical and aggressive. Be interesting to see what this coaching staff under head coach Travis Miller dials up on a second and long Britain in shotgun and they're bringing the blitz and he gets it away and he was in the grasp so they'll call it incomplete he was in the grasp of Matthew Schill the one linebacker who came on the blitz yeah Schill just half a step too late had great pressure coming around and tra tracked down Britain from behind and great presence of mind by Britain to just before the, his knee touchdown get rid of that ball but a good, good play by Matthew Schill out of Indian Head. His Bronx are playing in the nine-man provincial championship today, so want to wish the Indian Head Bronx all the best against the Melfort Comets. Coach David Rogers up in Melfort and Tim Klein down in Indian Head, great longtime high school football coaches. If they tried the field goal here, it'd be about 38, maybe 39 yards, but they're not going to try it. Isaac Wagner lines up in punt formation for the Okanagan Sun and he's not going to try and cough and corner it or anything he's going to put it right in the end zone and it's caught and it's going to be brought out to about the one or two yard line and bringing it out of the end zone is isaiah woodley so not great field position for the thunder and you know that's a factor we haven't really talked about much is the fact that you don't want to give up a rouge i mean points could be at a premium in this game yeah you know but it's early in the game and the thunder are going into the wind to get the extra 15 yards going into the win with three minutes left in the first quarter, I kind of think I would have thought about taking the Rouge. I mean, they get it out to the 20 because on, on that kind of punt or missed field goal, as long as you get it out, you automatically get it to the 20 in amateur football. But that one might have been worth the 15 yards. So Carter Shuchuk in shotgun formation throws to his left he's got a completion that's Ryland Sokol and that's a first down the first time those two connect today 11 yard pickup yeah good to see Sokol getting into the game just looking at him though as he goes back to the the huddle he looks like he's uh, hobbling a little bit so might be a little bit of carryover from that injury a couple of weeks ago that he might not be 100 percent I know we had uh, the killer Rylands on in the huddle this week Sokol and Likert and Sokol playing in his last game, Likert only in his second year, so a lot of mileage ahead for him, perhaps with the Thunder. And there's Likert up the middle. We do have a penalty flag down, and that's a gain of four or five yards. And we'll see what the flag's all about. It's going to be an offside against the Sun, so they'll get their five yards, but it'll be first down. Right, and it looks like the Suns... Offside, Okanagan, number 16, five yards, repeat first down. Yeah, those flags came pretty early. I don't know if they lined up offside again. We'll see on the, yeah, again, it looks like that far side defensive end is lining up within that one yard. And, uh, and I think that's what they got called for for the second time. Again, that was uh, Romario Reed. So something they'll have to sort out on that 
Okanagan defense. So here's a handoff and pushing his way ahead. I think that's Leichert. Yep. And he'll get about three of the five yards that they needed. So this will set up a very manageable second and short for Regina. I suspect they'll try to ground and pound it, but you never know. They might try and soften up the defense and maybe take their shot right here. Yeah, it's actually a little bit longer than we thought. It looks like a second and three. So uh, I would say a pass is still a possibility. He's got Quick three slant. receivers oh. to his right, one to his left, but he goes to Leichert, who just tries to sledgehammer his way up the middle. He's going to get a yard, maybe two. I think this is going to set up third and two. I didn't think he got much more than the one no, yard. No, yeah, you're right. He didn't get very much at all. Like, he's, they've got the ball just across the 40-yard line there. So, okay, it's about one, so they, got, they gave him a nice spot. One Looks and like, a half, maybe? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Looks like the Thunder bringing in a little bit of extra size. They're just going to try and sledgehammer their way to get a first down here. And I'm not sure that's a bad decision. I mean, we've seen it on from the other side going for it on third and short or third and two, I should say. So here uh, the rule is because the Thunder substituted more than three players. There's a stoppage and the, the Sun are allowed to substitute to match those substitutions. So that's why there's a little bit of delay here uh, to allow the Suns to get their players on the field. But it looks like we have a timeout. Jumbo on Jumbo. And I feel like this is a Bill Parcells type play coming up here. It was always about size and the athletes just fighting it out. Well, especially with the way Okanagan plays short yardage, they usually have five guys on those interior four gaps, the, the A gaps beside the center and then the B gaps between the, the guards and the tackles. They really man that, that area up. So if, if I'm the Thunder, I think I want to probably go a little bit wider on this. Be fascinating to see what they do. I mean, it, it seems predictable and obvious what they're going to do, but you never know. They might throw a wrinkle. It's all about the chess match. Okanagan will have to make sure they line up on side. Looks like they're good. And Shuchuk's going to hand it off. They're going to go with Leichert on the left side, and he does have the first down. It works out for them. They get a pickup of about three, four yards, and that'll be first and ten for the Regina Thunder as they move the chains. Yeah, and the flags came down, so it looked like maybe I was wrong about how they lined up. Maybe they were lined up offside. But anyway, yeah, the Thunder get the five yards. They get the first offside. down. Offside, Okanagan defensive line, five yards, first down. Oh, boy, this is really becoming part of the story, isn't it? That's well, that, three yeah, that's now. huge. That's yeah. three big yeah. penalties. Like, you know, you think it's only five yards, but it's five yards in really important situations. Adds but, up. Yeah, but we did see uh, the Thunder not trying to attack the strength of that that Okanagan defense right up the middle they tried to hit it outside so Shuchuk in shotgun formation has Likert to his side but he's going to pass he throws to the far side and that's complete to Rieger and short gain will give him five yeah it looks like five yeah. maybe a little more than five yeah so they get half of it right there to set up an unpredictable call here on second down and that, again, that's that zone defense that, that Okanagan plays where they just kind of drift back and then really attack aggressively once that ball's in the air. Shuchuk calling signals. He's got three receivers to his right, one to his left, and he's going to fire over the middle. Looks like he's going for Ford, and he does not have it. It hit the turf. Some good coverage there by the Okanagan Sun. And you see the celebration, and you can see the linebacker down there. Um, for Okanagan wearing number 39 right in the middle of it all. And we're going to get another look at Shuchuk here. He had to release it and he released it just in time. And some good coverage by Garrett Cape, the defensive back. Yeah, they must have been playing some kind of a, a combination coverage because it looked like they were playing cover three with three guys deep, but Cape was right on him like man to man. So it looked like there was some zone and man coverage happening on that play. These teams not afraid to throw on second and short or third and short, even despite the chilly conditions. And this is fielded by O'Shea. He bounces around just across the 40-yard line. He's a tough man to bring down. And finally, he's hauled down by the Regina Thunder uh, over on the far sideline as he's brought down. And they will scrimmage first and 10 at their own 44-yard line. The Okanagan's kind of going against their tendencies here on their special teams. They, What I've seen on, on watching some of their previous games is they really like to return the punts to the wide side of the field, but the last two punts they've taken to the short side of the field. I mean, the last punt was because it was right by the sideline, but uh, yeah, a little bit surprising that O'Shea took it to the boundary. Dom Britton with three receivers to his left, one to his right. He fakes the handoff to Garwood. He's going to fire it downfield to his right, 
And that's going to fall incomplete. Avery Wagner in tight coverage on Noah Wymack, the intended receiver. Yeah, Noah Wymack is actually a local kid from Yorkton, Saskatchewan. And he's a guy that uh, Britain likes to connect with. A lot of times it's just kind of on short passes, but that time he beat, at, he beat Wagner deep got over top of him and, and Wagner's going to have to be careful he doesn't uh, doesn't fall asleep and, and let himself get beat to, uh, to the outside. So we've seen some hard sledgehammer type running. We've seen some home run pass attempts and we're still scoreless in what is shaping up to be a classic showdown for the 114th edition of the Canadian Bowl. We'll be back with more here on Access Now Sports and CJFL TV. Hi everyone, Kelly Rempel here. You're going to want to tune in every week with Dante DeCary and myself. We're going to be talking about all things Regina Pats, including highlights and everything you want to know about your favorite junior hockey team. Pats TV, brought to you by Cameron Okalita. Cameron Okalita, improving lives through debt solutions for over 20 years. 306-359-0200 for your free consultation. I'm Brendan McGuire. Join me, Marshall Hamilton, and Olivia Lawrence every Tuesday at 7 p.m. for In the Huddle with special guest panelists and a weekly breakdown of the Saskatchewan Rough Riders on Access Now TV and the Access Now TV app. Brought to you by the Capital Auto Mall. It's the Capital Clearout at Capital GMC. We're clearing out all in stock 2022s or beat the rush and custom order the perfect brand new 2023 model for you. Capital Clearout at Capital GMC. CapitalGMC.ca. So there on the left, you see the coach of the year in the BC Football Conference, Travis Miller, first year head coach of the Okanagan Sun. And on the right, you see the coach of the year in the entire country, Scott McCauley. And of course, very emotional week is it for him. As you saw earlier, we found out on Monday the passing of his father, Don McCauley. So uh, that's a big part of the storyline here today, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's a very emotional week at the best of times. And then you throw in a loss like that. It's, it's huge for Coach McCauley. Don Britton fires to the far side. He's looking for O'Shea. Very nearly intercepted. Justin McCarricker breaks it up. The leading interception man in the Prairie Football Conference makes a big play there. Oh boy, what an opportunity. McCarricker, all he had was green in front of him. He made a great jump on the ball. He was right there, had both hands on it, and just knocked it down. Oh man, he... I'm sure he's going to be having some dreams about that one and, and wanting that opportunity back. And check that. O'Shea was not the intended receiver. That was Blaze Beauchemin over on the far side. Sometimes hard to pick up the white numbers on these orange unis. We are a long ways away. But I am not criticizing it. Those are beautiful orange unis. I think they made a good fashion choice today for this championship Saturday. So the punter Wagner is back as he lines up and he gets a wobbler away over to the near side and that one's probably going to roll out of bounds. Rieger tries to Ooh. chase it down and that might be no yards. That might no, be that's the yarder. punter. Oh, he's got it. Yeah, that's Wagner. Oh he got in there and got the ball. That's a that's a really heads up play. Like he, he didn't get a good kick on it. Like you said, it was wobbling. It hung up in the air because that's going right into the wind and he just sprinted down the field and, and got in there. So unless there was other players within that five yard range, if there's somebody else, that might negate the great play by Wagner. Yeah, we'll watch it again. So he gets the kick away. I, I don't know if our cameras will pick up how quickly he's able to take off. But, you know, it was spinning around, and uh, you could see that Rieger was trying to pick it up, and I thought maybe he should just leave it. But he realizes he can't do that because the punter has as much right to the football as he does. Because he's on side. Yep. And they had... There There's was no infraction on the play. Number seven legally recovered the ball as he is the punter. First down, Okanagan. Oh, my. Huge turnover. What a turn of events right there. Great heads up play by the punter, Isaac Wagner. And you know what? You should never underestimate. Sometimes we scoff at how important the punter is. There's a great cup that the Winnipeg Blue Bombers won back when you were still playing in 1988. <laughs> Bob Cameron punted into the wind and many say that he won the Blue Bombers that great cup. Well, if this is a close game by a point here or there, Isaac Wagner will deserve full marks for that play and his impact. The flag in the backfield on that run, and there's one of the Thunder players down. So the, the Suns ran off their left side there, ran behind their massive, massive, massive. left tackle, <laughs> Jeff Vanderwerf out of Abbots Abbotsford, BC. You know, it's very rare at this level of football that, I'll just pause it. Holding, Okanagan, number 61, 10 yards, repeat first down. 
it's very rare that you're on a football field at this caliber of football and say that one person is head and shoulders above everybody else, but that's, that's Jeff Vanderwerf. That is a mountain of a man. Matthew Kling, the man charged with holding. Looked yeah. like the center there. What a break that is for the Thunder because that'll march them back and we have a man down. And in the cold, I didn't catch who that was. And we'll just wait while the Thunder medical staff tend to the injured Regina Thunder player. But that's going to march the ball all the way back to the 48-yard line of the Sun and set up a first and 20 situation. I think that's 42, Stephen Smith. Yep. Ooh, down. that yeah, that, that would hurts. be a, a big hole. If yeah, you're right, that is Stephen Smith. So when we look at the uh, Thunder depth chart at who can come in for Stephen Smith. Uh, Devin Bauman's available, Mitchell Tanchak, we've seen him quite a bit. They've got Bauman listed behind him on that, as they call it, buck linebacker spot. Um, and they could always they could always restructure how they do things. They could always have four guys up front and drop the three linebackers, so we don't know exactly how they're gonna fill that void, but hopefully young Mr. Smith is okay. He's bent over at that sideline, but he's standing under his own power, which is good to see. And we'll see if he's able to come back or not. Dom Britton rolling left. He's being pressured and takes the hit. And that's a positive gainer. He only gets about, I'm going to say, six of the yards back. And it's going to be second and long. And that's a pickup of, he got from the 47 up to the 53 and a half. So he gets six and a half yards back. So it's second and 13 now for Okanagan on just their side of midfield. That was a great play by Cooper Filzak, number 45, who's playing halfback on the far side. The Thunder were playing four, cover three, and Filzak dropped out into the flats, which is exactly where Britton wanted to go and forced Britton to pull the ball down and scramble. Dom Britton out in shotgun formation. And he fires over to the near side, and he's looking for Bosham, and he has him, and he's pushed out of bounds. It's not going to be anywhere near what they, he's just ahead of the original line of scrimmage. Well, better than that, actually. He's about two, three yards. So this will set up third and seven, and we'll see the Okanagan punt team come back out. That was a dangerous throw into the wind over on that sideline of the Thunder there by Britton. And uh, that time the Thunder were bringing pressure, so Britton had to get rid of the ball as quick as he could and did a good job getting it away without getting it knocked down or deflected by one of the rushing D linemen. So the man of the hour who will be on the highlight tape after, Isaac Wagner, will come out to punt for the Sun and just Rieger, the only man back for the Regina Thunder. And I'm not even sure Rieger could have played it any better than he did on that play. And that's going to go to the far side. And Look again, out. it's bouncing around. And it is picked up by Rieger, who safely grabs the ball, moves ahead about another five yards, and he's down at the 41-yard line. That was, it was the opposite side of the field, but remarkably similar to the last play, and I'm sure uh, gave Justin Rieger and the Thunder flashbacks to what happened on the previous possession. Yeah, and I really like that, that call to try and punt to the field side because the Thunder only had one returner back, and usually the punters punt to the short sideline, and that time he punt, Wagner punted it way over to the far side, which made it really tough to try and get to in the air. Carter Shuchuk in shotgun formation. And he's gonna do a hard count, and he's gonna hand it off to Rylan Liker, who gets ahead of steam through the alley and picks up 14 yards up to midfield. First down, Regina Thunder. Yeah, great run by Likert, great blocking by that right side of the Thunder offensive line. Uh, Mikowski and Connor Clausen doing a great job springing him, and then he runs hard, runs through that tackle, number 39, finishing off the play for the Suns. So they're set up just on their side of midfield, and Shuchuk is going to once again hand it to Reichert, and Reichert, he dipsy doodles inside, looked like he was trying to get outside, couldn't find the seam, so he backpedaled inside, or reverse ground, I should say, and picks up a nice gainer, almost a first down. He's about a yard short. Yeah, look at that play by Likert. Just did a great job. It looked like number 42, Peyton Ryder, one of the, the best defensive players for Okanagan, their weak side linebacker. Looked like he had him in the backfield, and he just stuck his foot in the ground and, and uh, beat him. So Carter Shuchuk, once again, in shotgun formation. He hands the ball off, and this will be Likert, and no success there. He's probably going to lose a yard on the play. Yeah, you don't want to lose a yard on second and, you know, less than two, but uh, like uh, you said, I think they, they maybe did. Oh, no, they looks like they're giving him a little bit of space, so it's third and less than a yard coming up. Okay, so the jumbo set comes in. 
as we see we talk about using force on force Noah Stanley big number 60 coming in as part of the jumbo set and Tynan Gunther really good athlete I know he started some games along the offensive line this season so we'll see what the short yardage crew can do for the Thunder on third and less than a yard they're going to hand it to Leichert who cuts around the edge looks like he has it but there is a flag Another down flag, yeah. kind of an interesting play call by the Thunder they have nobody in the backfield which normally makes you think okay it's just going to be a quarterback keep where where's he going to run it but then they ran just a little uh, almost a little counter are they waving off the infraction? Yeah, so I wonder okay. if they thought Third maybe um, the he was an ineligible player. First down. I think you the hit Thunder. the nail on the head right there. Yeah, that somebody didn't report, but then they must have clarified that they did report. So a little bit of a risky play there. Obviously, if the if the Sun would have got any uh, penetration, they could have stopped that in the backfield, but fortunately, the Thunder O-line did a great job getting enough push. You want the November Canadian playoff experience. You're getting it this afternoon in Regina. Carter Shuchuk in shotgun formation. He drops back. He's firing it over to the near side. It's up in the air, and it's juggled, and it's dropped as he was looking on the near side for Zach Wojtlia, and he just couldn't quite come up with it. And that's too bad because Wojtlia did a great job coming back to the ball. There was deep coverage. The, the Suns were back in cover three, so there was the corner was deep, and then the halfback dropped underneath right there. Two guys surrounding him, and Wojtlia came back to the ball, had it right in his hands, and just couldn't bring it in. A couple of defenders there for uh, Kamar Bishop in tight coverage along with Tyler Turner for the Okanagan Sun to help break that play up. Carter Shuchuk in shotgun formation. Over the middle, connects with Isaac Ford. And that'll be a first down for Jetta Thunder inside the 30, a pickup of about 16. Yeah, you've talked about Ford a few times and how Shuchuk really try, is trying to get the ball to him. And in that case, they did find that window in the zone because the Suns had dropped back a little bit deeper. So there was that space in between the linebackers and the defensive backs. And that's where they were able to make the connection. The Thunder on the march. Shuchuk dropping back. He looks right, looks left, taking lots of time, and he fires it complete to Ford once again inside the 10 yard line. Another 20 yards, 36 yards between Carter Shuchuk and Isaac Ford on back to back plays. Yeah, I think the, the uh, Thunder got fortunate because the Sun really keyed on number 17, Isaiah Woodley, who cut a little bit deeper, and one of the safeties dropped back, and that opened up that space for them to connect underneath that deep cover four coverage. Thunder with their best field position of the afternoon. Shuchuk for any team. Shuchuk takes the snap. He's looking left, and he throws in tight traffic. Looks like he has a completion. No signal from the ref. Are they going to give it to him? That was Leichert in tight coverage. Looks yeah, like looks they're going like to give it. it to him. Yep. Yeah, we've got the official on the sideline marking the spot and the official in the middle taking the ball. Second and goal from the one-yard line. And I'm just looking where they... Yeah. Boy, that, was, that was a risky throw because there was three Sun defenders all around. Tight, tight window to try and fit that ball. So here looks like the Thunder in jumbo set once again. Shuchuk under center. And he's going to hand it off and running to the left and into the end zone for the touchdown. Ryland Leiker and the Thunder draw first blood on championship Saturday. Yeah, what a great drive the Thunder put together there. Um, starting to go a little bit more into the air. You know, we've seen them being really committed to the run, but now they're starting to mix it up a little bit more, getting some of those key passes over the middle uh, to get those chunk first downs, and then taking it off tackle outside, getting the ball to Leichert behind two great blocks, including number nine, uh, Ify Adabogan, who I thought was probably the unsung hero for the Thunder in the PFC Championship, the guy made a few key catches but just made a, a ton of big blocks from his receiver position. We'll get our first look of the place kicking from Eric Maximuk. And it's down. He splits the uprights as the point after touchdown is good. A 7-0 lead for the Regina Thunder. And we'll get a look at a few shots of the drive that opens the scoring in this championship game. Long pass there. Connection with Isaac Ford. That was a big gainer just inside the 30. And then once again, Shuchuk has all kinds of time to throw. He finds Ford again. And this is the connection with Leichert right around the goal line. And then they hand it off to Leichert, and he does the rest. 
Yeah, and you talked about all kinds of time on that second connection to, for, um, uh, to Ford. And, of course, that's all about the offensive line. Just a great job pass protecting because Chuchuk was wanting to go over the top to Woodley. And when he was covered, then he just pulled it down, still had lots of time to comfortably make that pass. And we never talk about the old lineman enough, but you're right. Uh, making that happen, Riley Schick, a Pete Tuloma, Max McFadden, Nick Makowski, and Connor Klassen doing yeoman's work for the Regina Thunder. And you know, I heard Coach McCauley talk about how in the past, sometimes he picked the best athlete, and over time he realized you can't always, you can teach a lot of the technique and athletic skills. You cannot teach size. And they focused the last few years on really having having the men up front who have the size to compete with the big boys with the hilltops the okanagan sun and we're seeing it here today right and of course there's the size you're born with uh genetically but then there's also the size that you work on getting in the weight room and i know that's another big thing the thunder's been committed to yeah and and uh tom Sargent, the coach of the saskatoon hilltops after the pfc loss he said Boy, we had we got to get back in the weight room because that was men versus boys out there, the battle in the trenches. So the kickoff is taken over on the far side. Here's O'Shea, scampers around one man and can't make another one miss. A nifty return up to the Okanagan 36-yard line. That's where the Sun will scrimmage first and 10, trailing 7 to nothing. And I should mention, we'll have some sideline reports a little bit later from Blaine Wyland on our broadcast crew today. And uh, he's talked about how slight breeze, team going from right to left has the advantage. That would be the Thunder in this quarter. And the field is actually in surprisingly good condition, relatively dry, and... Eric Maximek was hitting 40-yard field goal tries in warm-up hmm. both ways. So the field's in good shape, but it is hard. It's harder than normal, I will say that. Britton in shotgun formation. Hands off. This is Garwood. Off right tackle and gets around the first swarm, not the second. That'll be a pickup of about four. And that's a play that I don't think I've seen before out of Okanagan. They brought it looked like their backside, their left tackle and left guard. Uh, or sorry, no, it was just their left guard came around and then one of the receivers pulling around to lead block for Garwood, but the Thunder did a good job at the point of attack taking on those blocks and taking away at those running lanes. That big number 57, Jaden Schindel, is a load and he provided a lot of help on that run for Garwood, but it is only a pickup of three. So second and seven, Dom Britton looks to the left. He has a couple, oh, I thought it was gonna be a completion, but I spoke too soon as he hit his intended receiver right in the numbers for the Okanagan Sun, and that's Nathan Tonagai. That'll fall incomplete. That's one Tonagai would love to have back. Yeah, pretty uncharacteristic drop because he's a very uh, reliable receiver. He's used to catching those short, quick passes. Uh, good to see Steven Smith on the Thunder side back in, the, in coverage there back in the game after he was down the last time the defense was on. They've got blowers on both sidelines trying to keep everybody warm on this afternoon. And so Wagner will punt and his role's been very important it will be for both kickers when you have weather like this both punters i should say kickers and punters and oh. wagner oh he drops the snap it's behind him and he's tackled brandon janata comes in to put him down and that is a big loss of about 18 to 20 yards for the okanagan sun that'll set up the thunder first and 10 with a short porch starting at the 21 yard line yeah that was a huge play that long snap just a little bit low i mean long snapping on days long snapping's hard at the best of times but on a day like this when the ball's cold and your hands are cold that's really tough my youngest son was a long snapper for the u of s husky so i, I love the long snappers um, but good job by wagner to get the ball but still the thunder take over in great field position most of us don't have a true appreciation for how hard it is to do the long snap here's a handoff to rylan likert nothing doing as he's brought down by a host of okanagan tacklers and right in the middle of all of that the one big linebacker um philip palmerin comes in to help out so they will set up once again but i remember mike straczynski you might remember mm -hmm. played a long yeah. time in the cfl and was always kind of an afterthought until he got a signing bonus a nice signing bonus and a tryout from the national football league just to show you how critical it is to have somebody who's capable of long snapping shuchuk in shotgun formation once again he looks to his left. He's going into the end zone. Woodley falls oh. over, and they're going to throw the flags. He's going to get the call, it looks like. Okay. They're going to talk about it. I talked about that soft, uh, unnecessary roughness call in the Thunder earlier in the game. This, I think, is a really soft pass interference call against Okanagan. The, the defensive back had good coverage. He was looking at the ball. They just clicked feet, 
that happens, that's not a penalty. And boy, for both those guys to throw the flags, they're both the officials. Forward fast interference, Okanagan, number 17, 15-yard penalty, first down. I don't know, I'll look forward to our great access replay here, but I really think Okanagan got a bad call there. Kamar Bishop is the one who they flag. Yeah, I don't know. That that angle wasn't the best, no. but I don't know. Like yeah, you look I at Bishop, know. he's got his, his hips and his eyes turned inside. He's, he's not using his hands or anything. Shuchuk throws it over the middle for Ford, and it's incomplete. A couple of Okanagan defenders in tight coverage, including Garrett Cape, who's been a very strong defender in this game. He's broken up a few plays, and he's been busy right around Isaac Ford. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, because uh, Isaac Ford's been a, a key target, and, and Cape's a great athlete. He's had some good coverage, as you said. And uh, I guess I should give credit where credit was due. Kamar Bishop, yep, very involved in there. on that play. Shuchuk in shotgun formation. Oh, he's going to take it himself. And he's going to get in for the touchdown. Regina Thunder, a six-yard run and score for Carter Shuchuk. Yeah, I love that play call by offensive coordinator Stefan Ensign. Something that the Thunder rarely, rarely do. Just a, a, tra a traditional quarterback draw. Looking like he's maybe going to throw the swing pass. And then great job by the offensive line blocking. Number 76 leading the way. Epeti Tuoloma out of North Battleford, uh, doing a great job. And Shuchuk gets into the end zone to extend the lead. Whether it was the right call or not, the Thunder take advantage of the pass interference call that put them in close in scoring position. And now Eric Maximuk will try the point after touchdown. And he splits the uprights once again. So the score, the Thunder ahead 14-0 in the late stages of the second quarter. And we've got another look here at that controversial pass interference call. And Shuchuk puts it up. So you see Woodley falling, but you really don't see uh, the defender doing anything. And you can, sell, you can tell that he's just shocked. Kamar Bishop, yeah, th they there, just, there was nothing there that showed interference. No, anyways. they just clicked yeah. feet. Like that's, I played defensive back uh, when I played for the Rams way back in the day. And, and you gotta let defensive guys play defense. When the ball's in the air, nobody gets special privileges to get the ball. It's just as much a defensive player as the offensive player. Both of them were looking at the football. Sometimes feet click and people fall down. That's not a penalty. Sometimes the receiver will sell it too. And I'm not saying that's what happened there, but. Uh, yeah, because the flags came out yeah. before Woodley, uh, you know, popped up looking for a call. But yeah, yeah I, I just. My heart goes out to any DB that because it's hard enough to play in right. the corner. Um, but you know, I got to give the Suns uh, coaches credit. I'm right across the window from them here, up in the booth, and they didn't lose their mind at all. Like pretty a composed group up here. This is not their first rodeo. No. So kickoff taken on the near side by Mike O'Shea, and he finds a seam on the near sideline, and finally he's tripped up by the kicker, Eric Maximuk. Nice return by Mike O'Shea up to the 48-yard line, and the Sun will have good field position here for their next drive, trailing by two touchdowns. Yeah, I don't know if the Thunder kick coverage is a little bit tentative or the Okanagan uh, blocking is just that good, but... Um, there's just been a lot of space for, for O'Shea to run when he's got the ball these last two kick returns. It, the Thunder's gonna have to, they're gonna have to figure out that coverage. And make no mistake about it, he's a superstar in this level. He and Ryland Sokol, the number two ranked players, the top two ranked players in the country coming into the season. Javon Garwood, the running back, is all tied up and I thought he lost yardage, but they're going to give him a better spot than that. This will, what do you get, a yard? Yeah, maybe two yards. Maybe yeah. two. Matthew Schill did a really nice job getting off his block, making that tackle, and then was joined by Bistritson and uh, looks like Smith. Smith still looks like he's maybe a little bit banged up. I don't know if he's got a, a sore right shoulder, right arm, but he doesn't look 100%. There's some games where you just play through it if you can, and Britton is going to flip it over to Garwood. Did his best basketball fadeaway to get the ball to Garwood, who gets positive yardage. It's going to be a pickup of about four, we'll say. Yeah, nice little screen play set up by the Sun. So they let the rushers get through and then dump it off. You've got some big bodies in front there. But the Thunder do a good job, led by number 52, coming in to make the tackle, Kent Naffa, out of Yorkton, Saskatchewan. 
That's the way you want to beat those blockers on a screen. You can't dance with them. You got to try and knife through, take them on, and force the the receiver to try and dance around and let the rest of your buddies get there to make the tackle. But Effa did a great job making the play himself. No panic over on that Okanagan sideline, trailing by two touchdowns. It is still the first half. Isaac Wagner will come out once again. Now he doesn't do the place kicking duties. He just does the punting chores. We have yet to see Liam Atwood in this game. In the past games, Wagner has been doing both, but but it, like you said, I, I noticed on the depth chart they've got a punter and a kicker today. Oh, and they're they're calling it time count. I think this is going to go against Okanagan. Yep, you're right. Time count violation. Okanagan number seven, five yards. Still third down. I had a little bit of help from the Thunder players down on the, <laughs> down on the field, but. And that five yards is important because the, the Sun are going into the wind here. They're punting into the wind, and uh, every, every yard of field position matters. Wagner lines up at his own 36 yard line, and he's gonna kick it away. And he gets a clean kick away. It looks like a good boot. Riegers has to retreat. He bounced it off his fingertips, but collects it very nicely. I'm going to call that about a six-yard return up to the Thunder 36-yard line. That's where Regina will scrimmage first and 10. And, you know, um, they say that when you're playing in these cold-weather games and you've got the wind at your back, you have to make hay while the sun is shining. Well, the Thunder have been able to do just that here in the second quarter. Yeah, they have. And, and uh, I like what they did on that punt return that Traditionally, they like to have just one returner and bring pressure, but in the last two punts, they've had two returners, which just makes it a lot easier to field that punt. Makes it a lot safer. So Shuchuk in his usual shotgun formation, and he's gonna hand the ball off, and that'll be a positive gain there to Sadiq Sadiq, who we haven't said his name yet today, but a big part of that three-headed monster at running back that the Thunder have been using all season. Yeah, kind of a, a good idea to change things up, get a different ball carrier in there. Gives Likert a little bit bit of a break and it gives the defense a different look with a player with a different skill set. So Shuchuk working out of the shotgun again on his second and six coming up. And he's got three receivers to his left, two to his right, the five pack and oh, just about a completion, but it's broken up. Very nice play by the defensive back over on that far side for the Okanagan Sun, and uh, they were aiming for Woidla over on that far side, but uh, he took the big hit from the defender, Michael Jordan. Yeah, and Jordan, just a, a great aggressive play, comes in there, makes a textbook tackle, gets the shoulder pads right into the torso of the receiver, separates him from the ball. That's just an awesome defensive play and forces the Thunder into a punting situation here, third and about six. And correction on that, Isaiah Woodley, the receiver, intended receiver, not Woodlia, as I incorrectly stated. So they'll line up in punt formation, and Eric Maximuk will get it away cleanly. Pretty good hang time as well. Grabbed on the far side, this is O'Shea. He cuts from right to left, and he swarmed and brought down. I see Mitchell Panchak and a few others in hot pursuit for the Regina Thunder, and that will set them up. Reed Rabbits in on the play as well as we get another look at yeah. Michael O'Shea. Like, look at this coverage. This is outstanding. 50 for the Thunder had contained on the left side, Xander Tate. And then there was players coming down in their lanes. There weren't any staggers that would give O'Shea a seam because he was trying to get to the strong side. The Suns were trying to set up their, their nice uh, wall return over on the strong side. But the Thunder cover team did a great job coming down in their disciplined lanes and coming down hard. Good work by Devin Bowman, too, number 51 on that play. So they hand off to Javon Garwood and not much doing as he runs into the wall of that Regina run defense. That'll bring up second and long for Okanagan. The scouting report on Garwood for the Thunder was that, that he breaks tackles like crazy. And so you notice the Thunder coming in and really focusing on tackling low, doing those lower body tackles. That time, number 52, Kenton Effa, once again, making a great tackle, wrapping Garwood up around the legs and taking him down, not even a one yard gain. So once again, a second and long situation for the Okanagan Sun, not being able to move the ball a lot on some of these run plays on first down, flags down, and the throw will fall incomplete. Cooper Filizak in tight coverage with Blaze Boschman, and we'll check the penalty flag. Yeah, I think that's going to be offside on the Thunder. They just, on the, the far side, look like they jumped early. Just a little lack of discipline on that, that cadence by Britain. Offside, Regina, 91, five yards. 
Still second now. Reese McCormick. Yeah, you know, Reese McCormick, an All-Canadian, he's, you know, he's got to be more disciplined. There's a couple of guys over there that jumped. You just have to, you have to be able to turn off your ears and just watch your eyes. Don't listen to the quarterback. Just watch that ball. So Britton working out of the gun on second and four. He throws it to the near side. It is complete. And they've got him all surrounded and wrapped up. Nothing doing for Nathan Tonagai. And he had lots of space to work with, but I think he just maybe, I don't know if the field condition had a, a factor. Maybe you can't cut as quickly, but they were trying to get him in space. Yeah. It looked like he might have something. But, but I think you'll see the aggressiveness of the Thunder led by Miles Bisterton out of Balfour Collegiate here in Regina. Does a great job getting off his block and making that good lower body tackle. And that's the way you have to do it. You can't dance with those blockers in the open field because the Suns receivers are great downfield blockers. You got to get to the side of them, pick a side, rip through that block and then get through for a nice low tackle. Steven Smith, you mentioned earlier, didn't look 100%. He is absolutely not 100%. You could see him grimacing in pain. He's back on the sideline, so he's trying to gut through it in this uh, championship match. So this will bring up third and seven. Isaac Wagner in punt formation once again. He's been a busy boy all afternoon. Yeah, he's made some good good plays, uh, you know, placing the ball, that one hustle play when he got downfield and recovered his own punt. Um, they're going to need him to, in this situation, I think he probably has to kick to the short side here and just try and kick it right along the sideline and not give the Thunder a lot of room to return it. Just try and put it on a corner where they can get him all yeah. surrounded. And you can see a lot of the players bouncing around just trying to stay warm. Wagner will get the kick away, and uh, it's really close to the middle of the field. Looks like Gary and Miller will grab it on the run and hustles back about seven yards, and I think they're going to get the no yards call as well. Yeah, the, the no yards flag came out a little bit late. I think probably the, the official just had cold hands trying to get the flag out of his pocket, which is understandable. But yeah, that's a 15-yard penalty, so that's a big penalty for uh, to benefit the Thunder. And there is time. We'll get the call here. Tons no yards. Okanagan, number 40. 15 yard variety. First down. And that's a big point that you made, Ryan, the, four, the 15 yard variety. So that will march it into uh, Peyton MSO Bang with the penalty. That will march it up to the 47 of the Okanagan Sun. So, yeah, two minute drill. Here you go if you're Carter Shuchuk. And the two minute drill in Canada is very different than the two minute drill in the United States. There's tons of time here. Yeah, I think we call it the three minute drill and you can have two possessions up here. Uh, well, you could have five possessions in depending, three minutes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And we still have good onside kick rules too, where you can actually yeah. do an onside kick. They don't in the United States, but. So that's a two yard pickup as they hand it to Likert and good work by the linebacker run stopper for the Okanagan Sun as you see in your Thomas, the All-Canadian out of Toronto, that guy, boy, you want him coming off the bus first, he'll intimidate you. Shuchuk throws to the left, and there's a flag down, and again, involving Isaiah Woodley, we see a flag down. Yeah, there was, I think what Woodley was doing was a double move, I think he tried to do an out and up on number 31, Michael Jordan, and I think Jordan, I don't know if Jordan grabbed him, or if he just collisioned him, but yeah, there's two flags over there, so I think this is pass interference again. It is. Signal is it's against the sun. So I don't know if we'll get a look at it because it happened early. Forward pass interference, Okanagan, 31. 15 yards, first down. They're gonna call Jordan, yeah. Yeah, oh so no, that's kind of what you want on these out and ups. You want the, the defensive back to bite on the, sh the quick move and then you want to take him deep. So, so there was some contact there, but again, I'm not sure if the contact was a penalty because I didn't, I didn't see it soon enough, if it was a penalty or if it was just kind of uh, incidental, two players running into each other. And how much impact did it really have on the receiver? Well, it definitely it had a big impact, it yeah. Messes up his route. Yeah. And the Ooh. throw, oh, big hit there. He got his hands up on him. I, I'd be curious to see that replay and you could see the celebration after the fact by the defensive back and we'll get another look at it here. Yeah, that was a, that was a big hit. Like he just made a beeline. I think that's okay. Yeah. I thought I thought on the first shot that maybe he got his hands a little high, but upon second review, it looks okay. Yeah, we don't have a number 39 on our no. depth chart, so I'm not sure who that was, but that was just an aggressive, you know, flying out to those flats and cover three. That's exactly what he did. 
Shotgun formation again. Shuchuk stepping up, and he's going to be brought down for the first quarterback sack of the day for the Okanagan Sun and doing the celebration sack downs, Aiden Hennessy. Yeah, the Sun don't usually bring a lot of pressure. They, they really are typically content to play zone and, and sit back and let their athletic defensive line do the work. And yeah, that time is just four-man pressure. So they typically have a three-man uh, three defensive line, and then they'll send one linebacker. And they got in there. So a little bit uncharacteristic for the Thunder to give up something like that. And Kalan Thomas get, got around the right tackle for the Thunder, number 66, Connor Klassen. And that helped the pocket collapse to create the quarterback sack. First one of the afternoon for Okanagan. Yeah, Started. that's a huge stop after that, uh, the good field position on the last punt. Yeah, and we were saying, Blaine Weiland was mentioning, as we see the punt will go right through the end zone, and there's really nothing Michael O'Shea could do with that. They signal one, that'll be a rouge for Regina, and it'll be a 15-point lead. So they do give up the one point, but um, we were talking about how Eric Maximuk, uh, we think maybe could do up to 40 yards. Uh, that might be a bit of a stretch in these conditions, but they needed the stop right there to prevent him from adding three. Right, and Maximuk's been a little bit inconsistent with his field goal kicking this year. He's been about 50%, like his punting's been very good. Uh, he's the leading punter, he's all Canadian punter, but field goal wise, a little bit inconsistent, and especially you know in these colder weather games, there's been a few games where the ball just hasn't had a nice thud on it, especially going, in, going into the win. This one going with the win, he probably would have had the pop. Injured at the start of the season, too, and sometimes that hurts with the kicker trying to get in his rhythm. They hand it off to Garwood, who finds a seam over on the left-hand side. A nice run, very close to a first down. They might even give it to him. No, I think he's a bit short. A little short, yeah. yeah. And the, the Sun have a minute and a half left. There's lots of time. They can run whatever they want here. They don't have to be in a big hurry. And it'd be a big deal if they could get points before the half. Oh, big and tackle. That was a nice tackle, and I'll have to check if that was Smith on that tackle. And there you get a look at big 96, Matthew Schill right in the middle of it. We'll get a look at the replay. And no, that's who it was. It was Schill, just tripped him up. Yeah, Schill's been having a good half. Like, he's, he's made some big plays getting into the backfield, getting off the blocks, and making some good tackles. And this will be third, and yeah, less than a yard. They're gonna sneak ahead, and He's got it easily. Second effort. Yeah, that's great effort by Britton to just keep his feet moving and do a little bit of a spin to get out of that pile, that mess of bodies that was right in the middle of the field, and then lunge forward for about five or six yards. Nice push. Yeah, like it looked like he was thought, and that, yeah, we, that Okanagan offensive line is so big. They're just massive men in there. So Britton has three receivers to his left, three to his right, six pack, and he's got a completion to O'Shea, and that's a first down Okanagan as he's pushed out of bounds. We'll call it a pickup of 15 yards, and the Sun are marching with under a minute to go in the first half. Yeah, there is a lot of room over there on that, uh, on that flat area of the field. No coverage for the Thunder, and O'Shea had all sorts of room to make that easy catch and turn it up field and then gets out of bounds. We're 47 seconds, that stops the clock. They still have lots of time. So he went out of bounds, so the clock won't start till the play starts. And here is Britton. He's gonna take off and he gets around a host of uh, defenders, but Steven Smith hauls him down. I think that's a no gain. Yeah, maybe, maybe a less yard. than a yard. Or, or yeah, it looks like about a yard he got. Uh, but now, yeah, now they have to get moving because once that whistle goes, the clock starts to tick under 40 seconds. Sun looking for points before the half. And clock is ticking here. And Britton lining up, takes the shotgun snap. He's got a receiver over the middle, and that is caught. That is complete. And that's a big pickup, and that's O'Shea once again up to the 24-yard line. And the coverage was right there. I think that was Kent Naffa just in perfect position, but just didn't, uh, wasn't able to get in the way of the ball there. But great concentration by O'Shea to bring that one in with tight coverage. And it looks like we're going to get a timeout call here by Okanagan. Yeah, they're going to use their timeout to talk this one through. Maybe a good call here. I mean, you're, you've only got 22 seconds left. You're at the 24-yard line trying to talk this out. Because oh, sure. Yeah. 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 They still had the timeout. You may as well use it. You got that nice little chunk play there to O'Shea to get into a really nice scoring position here. So uh, just inside the 25 yard line, 
they've got lots of time for um, easily three plays, maybe four. And uh, if they get the touchdown, obviously that's ideal. That's what they want. But they want to at least come out with some kind of points, field goal at worst. So we'll line it up. We'll be curious to see what they go with. On first down, again, only 22 seconds to work with. We don't know what the range is for their place kicker, Liam Atwood, or who's listed as their place kicker today. So in shotgun formation, Dom Britton takes the snap. He's got oh. a six pack and he's brought down on the quarterback sack. There is a penalty play, well, two penalty flags down. Yeah, again, I think the Thunder defenders, they were bringing pressure. Obviously they had extra guys at the line of scrimmage but it looked like a couple of them took those little jab steps into that one yard uh, that one yard neutral zone and that's gonna draw the offside and, and give the sign a uh, five yard gain and take that sack off the, off the board, which is huge. We'll get the official call from head referee JP Chorney. Oh, it's both ways, wow. So that's they'll just replay. Yeah. They don't add any time on the clock for that either, I no, don't think. No, no, there's no correction nope. on the time. No. Nope. So, so that works to the thunder advantage, I would think. I mean, it's only three seconds, but still. There are fouls by both teams. Yeah, like it's better than Offside. giving them five yards. Yeah. Defensive line. Okay. Not as good as the sack. Offside. But it's good for the Off sun Okanagan. because the clock holds here at 19 Replay seconds. Replay the down. Clock will start on the snap. Yeah, it doesn't snap start until they snap the ball. Okay. The plot thickens. Britton out of the gun. Boy, there's a big wide open area in the middle of the field. And we've got four receivers on the near side for the Sun. Britton takes the snap and he's firing it up deep, looking for O'Shea, and then falls incomplete. There's a flag down. <laughs> okay, again. Maybe Janata. Maybe I got to question that pass interference call when there's the official right there looking at the play and the sideline official that's quite a bit farther away makes the call. You know, that, that ball just hung up in the air. O'Shea tried to get back to it. Oh, uh, maybe, yeah, maybe he might have grabbed it a little bit. Out of number 20, 15 yep. yards, first down. Oh boy, Brandon Janata. Brandon Janata, yeah, yep. might have might have got a little bit of that right shoulder and pulled him down. So yeah, that could have been a good call. Just surprised that the official that was right there didn't make the make the flag because he had a perfect angle on it. He saw the right arm of of Janata. So this is a great situation offensively for Okanagan. They can probably take two cracks at the end zone, and if it doesn't work, kick the field goal. Britton fires over to the far side, and it is complete, but they're not going to get anything out of it. And that's O'Shea, no, uh, Wymack, pardon me. And that'll be a, I'm not sure how they, did they spot that up at the five yard line? I didn't realize yeah, it was that got far a, off. Yeah, they okay, got a couple yeah. yards on it. They yeah. got about three yards. Good play by Wagner though, good aggressive play to come up and, and there, the tackle. This is going to be the final play of the half. They're not going to get a third playoff. Fired into the end zone, and that one is complete. Touchdown, that's Okanagan Sun. That's a great Sun. catch, wow. And that, because that coverage was all over. Colby Moletto holds it in, and the stakes couldn't have been much higher than that, because they weren't going to get another playoff. The clock yeah, had ticked down to zero. Great call by you to notice the, that the time had ticked down because of the inbounds play and the, uh, the inbounds catch. But oh man, you just look at that. Filizak in coverage was all over him, and he just reached around and made that great catch. Boy, that's that's massive for Okanagan going into the halftime break after this convert. Liam Atwood will line it up. Ooh. And it is good. So that is now a 15 to seven game at the half. And we see some of the good folks who made the trek in from the Kelowna area likely with a little jolt of energy heading into the half. And boy, does that change the storyline in this 114th edition of the Canadian Bowl. We'll be back with the halftime show next on Access Now Sports and CJFL TV. With the 72 hour window on Next TV Stream, you're able to go back and view a show that you forgot to record that just gives you that extra flexibility to watch the entertainment that you want. At Access, we're all about you. I'm Blaine Wallen, joined with the CJFL Commissioner Jim Pankovich. And Jim, I guess. Uh, kind of works out this way. The Canadian Bowl is held in the same site of the Grey Cup. Uh, what's your thoughts about that? Uh, well, it's wonderful. I think uh, 
Regina is a wonderful place to host a, a major event like this, like our Canadian Bowl or the Grey Cup. They're well prepared. Everything's been first class. The, the city has rolled out the red carpet for our teams as well this weekend. I know we've had an outstanding uh, event leading up to this. We'll have a great game this afternoon and uh, look forward to the Grey Cup next week as well. I guess from a commissioner's perspective, do you mind just giving, I guess, your thoughts and your perspective of both teams? Uh, so it's, it was been a great season. You know, it's been, uh, we started back in July. We've had 83 regular season games, nine playoffs, national semifinal. Now we're here for the Canadian Bowl. Okanagan's come through, undefeated season, went and beat the St. Clair Saints, our Ontario Conference champion, a couple weeks ago. Now they're back here to play the uh, Prairie Conference champion, uh, Regina Thunder, who also is undefeated, so a team of undefeateds. And it seems like that happens a lot in terms of uh, the CJFL Canadian Bowl, that uh, maybe not quite undefeated seasons, but uh, both teams kind of have to earn their way. It seems like they're powerhouse teams. It seems like it's a powerhouse from each conference colliding in the Canadian Bowl usually each year. Usually it is, and usually it's an outstanding football game because of that. You know, we've got great conferences. Our teams do a great job of preparing for the season. And again, we're going to have an exciting game in the afternoon. Your thoughts about uh, Regina, you know, overtaking Saskatoon. Obviously, the Hilltops are a story franchise, but a situation from your perspective when a team like Regina knocks off Saskatoon like they did this year. Well, it was wonderful to watch them all season. You know, they had a very competitive year. They played three extremely competitive games together, two during the regular season and one in the playoff game. Regina's earned their way here. As you said, Saskatoon is a storied history. They, they've been to this game many times before, but Regina earned the spot this year. And yeah, you kind of touched on it as well, but the whole PFC really had parity this year. And I, I'm sure from your side, that's a really great thing to see. Yeah, it is. You look at any, any game can be won. I always talk about it's an exciting football game if the winner comes out by winning it in the fourth quarter. And we saw a lot of games this year, not just in the Prairies, but right across the country. Uh, award ceremonies, major awards. Uh, just talk about having a, a chance to recognize the best of the CJFL. Well, it's nice to be able to get together in person after a couple of years of not being able to. So getting our, our, our all Canadians together, getting our outstanding offensive, defensive, special teams, rookies together last night, as well as honoring just both teams. That was a special event last night and uh, really was an opportunity for us to recognize all the excellence we have across the league. And, as a, and you kind of touched as well, but as a league as a whole, how is, you know, the CJFL, you know, like every other kind of league, uh, adapting in a post-pandemic world? So uh, last year, we were the first year back on the field. We played shortened seasons. This year, we're really back to, I'll say, more normal operations, full seasons, regular seasons, off-season off playoffs, basically back to normal. Again, a few precautions as we go, particularly when the teams are traveling. But other than that, we're basically back to normal. And uh, just circling back here once again for today's game, just your thoughts about uh, we touched on all the awards, but the whole event uh, leading up to today's game, just being here in Regina uh, as a part of the Canadian Bowl. Out outstanding. So the organizational committee here put on a great show for everybody. We've also had our league, our annual league meetings here during the event, so we were able to get together. All 19 teams from across the country were here represented, so we're starting to plan already for the 2023 season. But uh, our award ceremony in today's game will really culminate our 2022 season. And fair to say, the only thing you're hoping out of today's game is a, a competitive game? A competitive game, and, and uh, as I said, whoever wins, wins in the fourth quarter because it's exciting for everyone. All right, Jim, thanks a lot. Thank you very much. Welcome to Pats TV. Join me, Dante DiCaria, and my co-host Kelly Rempel as we break down the news and highlights from the last week of the Regina Pats. Pats TV here on Access. Brought to you by Cameron Okalita. Cameron Okalita, improving lives through debt solutions for over 20 years. 306-359-0200 for your free consultation. All right, Murad, the president of Regina Thunder must be a very exciting times right now here as we're standing before the Canadian Bowl. Obviously, for the franchise, uh, you must be very excited today. Well, you know what? This is what it's all about. We worked really hard over the last number of years to get to a national championship, and here we are, you know, at Mosaic Stadium. We're going to be in front of, we hope, a really big crowd. And, you know, the, the, the teams worked really hard. The off season, you know, everything through the season, that's what we do to get here to win a national championship. I heard an interview with uh, Dave Jackson earlier this week, and he really credited yourself and Coach McCauley uh, during the COVID year, uh, really getting the team, you know, prepared during that situation where it was a lost year, but it really seemed like that you guys really benefited from that uh, pandemic closed year that you guys really rallied around these last couple of years afterwards. Well, it was all about off-season training. It was about getting the team together. It was about goal setting. It was about working on their mental toughness, their physical toughness, you know, team cohesion. All of that has paid dividends. You know, here we are, you know, sitting, uh, you know, with 19 uh, regular season wins in a row, you know, now a big playoff run to a national championship. I mean, that's what, 
you know, again, we've always said if we went off the field, we went on the field. And that's, you know, exactly what's uh, what's transpired. So fair to say that it's the off season. The, the reason you guys are winning during the seasons because you're winning off the season. Well, we're, we're physically fit. You know, we're ready for the season. You know, when we get to the fourth quarter, you know, our boys are, are, are still, you know, playing smash mouth football. And so, you know, that's all about, uh, you know, physical fitness. It's about preparation. And I think that that's, you know, what gets championship teams, uh, you know, the gold. A couple weeks ago on this field, uh, you guys defeated the Sassian Hilltops in the PFC Finals. Describe that victory. Obviously, that was a big uh, monkey off you guys' back. Yeah, you know, I mean, listen, the Hilltops are, uh, you know, a, a, a very classy franchise, won many, many championships. And, you know, to get over that hump uh, with a decisive victory, you know, showed again the step that we'd taken. The, the, uh, the preparation that the boys have done is paying off. They're playing to their game. And, uh, you know, the results are showing it. Uh, you know, even besides the Hilltops, did you feel that your team really earned it this season, not only with the Hilltops, but like teams like the Rifles, the Huskies, really pushed you guys throughout the season? Well, listen, we had close games, and, you know, our, our team doesn't know how to lose, right? They have resiliency. You know, they never panicked in any situation. Our coaches are well coaching, you know, the game plan, and the boys are executing. So when I look at that, you know, again, we probably had the toughest season. We played the Hilltops twice, the Edmonton Huskies twice, and the Winnipeg Rifles twice. You know, those are the three strongest teams, and we played them both twice this season. So nobody can say we had an easy run to the Canadian Bowl, and, uh, you know, here we are uh, standing where we belong. You know, in the season, obviously, everyone's disappointed that the Rough Riders didn't get to play in front in the home crowd for a great cup. What's your thoughts about playing in front of a home crowd for a Canadian Bowl uh, this season? Well, you know, here it is. Uh, Saskatchewan football is still alive. You know, disappointing season, obviously, of the Riders. But, you know, the Thunder, we're going to bring home a championship. And, uh, you know, the U of S Huskies are still in it in the Hardy Cup today. So, you know, a couple of championships we hope are going to be coming into, into the province again. From your perspective, what do you think is going to be a big factor for you guys uh, winning the game today? I know, obviously, you're going to pick yourself to win today. So what do you think is going to be the big difference? You know, I think we have a really balanced attack, uh, you know, running game, uh, passing game. Uh, the cold weather is going to be a, an issue. I think that, you know, Okanagan is uh, obviously not used to playing in, you know, minus 15, minus 23 with the wind. And, uh, you know what, we're going to run that ball. We're going to, you know, hit really hard. We're going to have our passing game working as well. So balanced attack, I think that's the key to winning this game. All right, thanks a lot and good luck. Thank you. Hey team, my name is Brendan McKenzie. I'm going to be your host on Level 10's Fit for Life program on Access Now TV. Join us for our 10-week fitness series. All right, Les, uh, President of the Okanagan Sun, uh, just your thoughts here about uh, being here in Regina for the Canadian Bowl. Well, like I said last night, this is the capital of football in this country, and I think from our organization, myself, our staff, I, we couldn't be more happy to be here. What's it like, you know, from your perspective, uh, being in you know, playing the game in a site that's going to be a couple weeks, or just over a week from now, be the Grey Cup site. Well, that's, it would be fun to stay for another week. You know, hopefully the weather warms up a little bit, but uh, no, it's, uh, this is a great location, and uh, we're just happy to be here, man. Uh, just like, it's obviously an undefeated season, but you mind just kind of recapping this, your guys' path to the championship that led you here to the Canadian Bowl? Well, I think our season started last year when we lost to Langley, who won the national championship. We had a good club back last year, but a little younger. This year we've got a little, you know, a little more older group of kids, um, and to get to this, get to this game, you got to have some experience. And I think we had some experience. We had a 10 and 0 season, and uh, you know, our score we averaged 42 points a game. We gave out 15, 16 points a game. So, I mean, it's pretty obvious that you know we had a good club right from the start of the year. We added a few pieces. Uh, our quarterbacking, our special teams, uh, you know, like all our skill players are pretty good. So, here we are. Uh, I know your guys' organization has been here before. Sometimes you guys go through straight through the conference finals to the league championship like Regina did. Or, or else the pass you guys took this year with a national semifinal. Is it any difference, you know, when you have to go through that other conference before you go to the final championship uh, here in the Canadian Bowl? Well, it's a little more certainly on the travel side. You know, like, I mean, that was a brutal trip to get to Windsor. I mean, it was like planes, trains, and automobiles to get there and get home. And... Uh, but I, you know, hands, you know, my hats off to the uh, the Ontario Conference champions. They had a really good club this year in in uh, Windsor there, and uh, they gave us everything we can handle. So I think it certainly helped us prepare for this game. I think our guys are uh, ready to go, and uh, we'll see what happens. I'm sure from the regenerative perspective, besides the home turf, they probably feel that the weather is to their advantage. From your guys' side, how, do you feel like uh, is it at all disadvantage? Have your thoughts about the weather here today? I don't think the weather, we have a lot of kids on our football team from the Prairies and have played in this. 
Uh, they, we've been here, we came an extra day to kind of get climatized to it. So, I mean, it was 20 below. They were here the other night practicing, and it's been also cold back home. So I don't see that, you know, as a, a, you know, a disadvantage for us. I think our guys will come out and play, and I think the best team will win. And just overall from your side, you think that, what do you think is just kind of one difference that might put you guys over the top today? I think from uh, from what I've seen all year is our balance of our offense. I know they've got a very balanced offense too, and it's going to come down. I honestly think it will come down to uh, penalties and, and uh, turnovers, mistakes. And uh, from what I've seen, uh, both teams look like they're both very balanced. Um, and I think that's basically what it's going to come down to, I think, turnovers and, and penalties. All right, well, good luck tonight, today, Les, and thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Live December 10th. Calgary Hitmen. Regina Pats. He scored! How the heck did he do that? Access Now's TV coverage of the WHL is brought to you by Tyson Mining. The full-service underground mining contractor of choice. Local challenges, global solutions. Visit TysonMining.com. I'm Brendan McGuire. Join me, Marshall Hamilton, and Olivia Lawrence every Tuesday at 7 p.m. for In the Huddle with special guest panelists and a weekly breakdown of the Saskatchewan Rough Riders on Access Now TV and the Access Now TV app. Brought to you by the Capital Auto Mall. It's the Capital Clearout at Capital GMC. We're clearing out all in-stock 2022s or beat the rush and custom order the perfect brand new 2023 model for you. Capital Clearout at Capital GMC. CapitalGMC.ca. Thirty minutes in the books of this 2022 National Canadian Bowl Championship game at Mosaic Stadium, as we see many of the approximately 5,000 spectators returning to their seats after warming up in the lobbies and the concessions here at Chile Mosaic Stadium, just a shade uh, to the side of beautiful downtown Regina. As we get a look at the first touchdown, a one-yard run by Ryland Liker to open the scoring in the second quarter, followed up by the six-yard scamper by quarterback Carter Shuchuk. That made it 14-0, and later the Thunder would add a rouge, and down 15-0, Dom Britton puts it up in the air into the end zone, and they get the touchdown. Great catch by Colby Moletto. He was in tight coverage by Cooper Filizak, who probably couldn't have done much more on that play. Great line from our good pal Michael Ball doing the broadcast on CKRM Radio. And Pete Pasco, they said he mossed it, Randy mossed it, <laughs> with that catch. And boy, does that change things coming into the second half as uh, we're back live. Brennan McGuire along with Ryan Hall in the broadcast booth. We've got Blaine Wyland down on the sideline. And we'll have full coverage of the post-game championship celebration and trophy presentation here at Mosaic Stadium. But you think about that one play, you know, if he drops it or if Filizak manages to break it up, it's 15-0. Uh, the Sun really haven't had anything to show for anything in this ball game they're probably demoralized and instead they get uh, rejuvenation from that play and it makes almost an entirely different ball game for the second half right because I think in the first half you know probably we'd say the Thunder outplayed the the Sun a little bit um, it wasn't certainly a dominant half but but they were able to finish off a couple of drives and and get some good field position getting uh, getting into scoring position but yeah it was it's really becoming evident that it's it's going to come down to a few key plays in this game, uh, whether it's going to be a turnover, a penalty, or a big uh, a big offensive play connection, something like that. Uh, there's not much to choose between these two teams, and and it's still game on. Very historic matchup, and in all of the editions of the Canadian Bowl since 1938, number one overall a tie between the Saskatoon Hilltops and the Langley Rams, who have each won 21 championships. As we see Ryland Sokol, I thought maybe he was trying to get the bike going because maybe it had froze up on him, but <laughs> I say that completely tongue-in-cheek. And uh, and then tie, or in the third spot is Regina, 17 championships. One, the first one won by the Regina Dales rugby team in 1938 before they had to take a break for World War II, so very fitting that this game would be played the day after Remembrance Day, and the last of the 17 championships won back in 2013 by the Thunder. So far, the only one by the Regina Thunder, and I should mention the 15-1 in between 
won by the Regina Rams. So three different names. And, um, well, for you, Ryan, I'm sure that it's exciting to see a program that you were there on the ground floor coaching with uh, from day one in the year 2000 come up the way it has. Yeah, it's kind of cool with both teams. Like I, back in uh, in 88, when I or sorry, 87, when I was playing for the Rams, we played against the Suns in the national semifinal. And uh, yeah, and then I was on the coaching staff with the Thunder for the first four seasons. And, and I'll tell you where the program is at now is miles ahead of when <laughs> I was there. You know, just from top to bottom, the, the executive, great people, the coaching staff, the, the culture of the team, they've really come a long way. All right, so we get a look at the opening kickoff here for the second half, and it's Wagner, the punter, who lets it go. And coming back on the return, I saw somebody's lid go flying and was distracted. It's Ryland Leichert on the return. Just trying to see who lost. Oh, it's Justin Rieger who lost his helmet. Dangerous situation, but Rieger with a nice uh, return, Leichert with a nice return up to his own 38-yard line. The third quarter is brought to you by Vintage Vinyl, your one-stop gift shop. Uh, here on this championship game and at a lull um, also here I should mention that the Thunder uh, won the inaugural Rick Smoke Community Involvement Award and we will get a shot of that a little bit later as Shuchuk looking for Soko Falls incomplete and we'll get a look at that uh, award being presented here um, for the community involvement last night at the CJFL Awards presentation here in Regina and you can see the Thunder uh, accepting the award for the inaugural Rick Smoke Community Involvement Award. So that's a big thing for the organization as well. Carter Shuchuk in shotgun formation. He stops, he's gonna round around the right side and he's tripped up and he's brought down on the quarterback sack. And that's a big play by Keelon Thomas, the big star out of Toronto, who picks up the second quarterback sack of the game for this defense. Yeah, I want to come back and talk about that Rick Smoke Award, but that's that's just a great defensive play by Okanagan. Their coverage downfield was fantastic. They dropped back into zone. Everybody was covered, which forced Chuchuk to get on the run. And then Thomas, with that great athletic ability, tracks him down for the big loss. And the plot thickens just a little more. The Thunder have the wind at their backs in this third quarter, and it will flip around in the fourth quarter. And this is going to go over the head of O'Shea. He scoops it up on the run at his own 25. Very tentatively tries to get outside and ends up with a five-yard return. Great special teams play there for the Regina Thunder, starting with the punt from Eric Maximuk. Yeah, absolutely. Maximuk got it to turn over. He had the wind at his back and uh, put it over O'Shea's head. And then great coverage by the Thunder. They shut off the wide side of the field, forced O'Shea to cut back into the rest of the, the coverage team. Number 27 for the Thunder coming down, Adam King out of Campbell Collegiate making the tackle. So that did a good job flipping the field, getting Okanagan back in their own end. So the Sun not working with as good a field position as they probably had hoped. Hand it off to Garwood who will get outside. That's gonna be a no gain. They completely read it all the way and leading the charge there for the Regina front seven, Matthew Schill, big number 96. Yeah, really nice tackle. Again, getting through, getting off that block and a nice lower body tackle on Garwood. He had a lot of help too from his mates in that front seven uh, fighting against, that's a big offensive line. I mean, you, you alluded to it earlier, but that's a big challenge, especially on those run plays to try and stop. And for the most part, the Thunder front seven has held the run game in check. Biss Ritson gets a piece of him, but Britton rolls right and he splits the two defenders and gets up field and is gonna have the first down for the Okanagan Sun. That was just great athleticism and great reading the play from Dom Britton. Yeah, big opportunity. Bisterson comes in here, he's got a perfect angle, but he goes to the wrong hip. When you're going to that quarterback, you have to go to the back hip. Don't let him get outside like that. And then Britton turns on the wheels, uses his great athletic ability and elusiveness and turns a big mess into a first down. So great individual effort by Britton. Boy, for a quarterback who's probably not used to playing on a field in these kind of conditions, he's sure doing a great job with his footwork and that's just nothing doing as he's sandwiched on the play by both Regina defenders Kenton Effa, who Ryan has talked about a lot, and Peyton O'Connor in on the stop. Yeah, a real nice stick by Peyton O'Connor, getting his shoulder pads in there, and Effa helping down low. Really solid. 
So just, yeah, just maybe a, a foot or two on that first down play. So it brings up second and long for Okanagan. Okay, shotgun formation, Dom Britton. This is gonna be a second and nine play. Oh, and there's flags down. We saw early movement, Britton tiptoes away again and he's sandwiched. I think you'd be a little bit concerned about maybe the hits that he's taking, but uh, they're really having a tough time containing Dom Britton. We'll see what the penalty flag is all about. There was lots of early movement at the line of scrimmage. Yeah, it looked like number 20, Brennan Janata jumped offside for sure, and I think there might have been somebody else for the Thunder that went offside. So, so I'm guessing that uh, that Okanagan will take the five-yard penalty. Get that's what I was just going to ask you. Yeah. I was wondering, would Return you accept one? Because it's still third five and... Yards. Repeat, second down. Yeah, mm. it's, it's still third and right. a couple. So it's better to get the get the five yards and get the, the intermediate second down try here. Pretty good chance if you have two cracks, you can get yeah. better chance. Basically, better chance that on two cracks, you can get four yards as opposed to one crack, two yards. Right. Okay, Dom Britton in shotgun formation. He has one, two, three receivers to his left and three receivers, sorry, two receivers to his right. Floats it over the middle, and that falls incomplete. Looked like he was looking for O'Shea, but they were going in opposite directions. O'Shea was cutting to the middle while the ball was sailing to the right side. That time, Janata was back in coverage instead of blitzing. Did a good job keying on O'Shea. <clears throat> if he would have had his eyes on the, on the quarterback, probably could have made that interception there. But again, you have to make sure you're playing the man, the intended receiver. You can't let him uh, make the catch while you're busy looking at the quarterback. So they'll line up again. And this will be a third and four, and this time it'll be in punt formation as Wagner, who's been a busy man, got to be reaching double digits now for the amount of action he's had. And gets a high wobbler, and that's just going to roll right out of bounds. No opportunity, it lands right in front of Isaac Ford, and they will scrimmage first and 10 at their own 43-yard line. You know, Isaac Ford, a big story, always been a big story uh, with the Regina Thunder. Um, of course, the younger cousin of former CFL player Stu Ford. And of course, the big news, tragic before the season started losing his mother. So this is a very emotional sport. It's been an emotional year for Isaac Ford. Which is a great thing about a football team. It just helps come together in, in, a, in a very hard time in life for someone like Isaac. And hands off to uh, Riker, who gets up. And sorry, Justin Rieger, my mistake, gets a first down there. That's a pickup of about 12 yards. Really nice run on first down. Just off the right side of the line. Good kick out block there by number 76 for the Thunder. Epedi Taloma. And then he just cuts right up field off that block. Shuchuk with one running back to his left. And he's gonna hand it off to Leichert. Leichert spins off one tackle, gets around another, and turns it into a first down, maybe more. And that turned out to be a 15 yard pickup. And boy, he wasn't far away from busting that one loose. Yeah, Leichert's usually kind of a one foot in the ground. You know, just a one cut, just stick your foot in the ground and then cut up. But that time he made a couple of really nice lateral moves to get off those tackles. And you know, in the cold weather, if you hand tackle, it's so hard. You know, you just really need to try into the ball carrier and, and like it like it made that really tough for the sun defenders so he's got rieger to his right three receivers to his left ryland sokol on the far side hands off to rieger and nothing doing there he's going to get a yard maybe two so not much doing on first down yeah that time kalan thomas did a good job getting off his block he's got really long arms and just was able to wrap Likert up very quickly take him down just for a short game. I was just going to say it's an obvious passing situation, but with the way mm -hmm. they've been able to break some of these run plays, you just never know. So this time he has Likert to his right, and he's going to pass here. He fires over the middle. That's going to fall incomplete. Looked like he was looking for Isaiah Woodley. Wasn't even close. Sailed way over him. So we don't know. It just didn't look like quarterback and receiver were on the same page there. That'll bring up third and nine and a punt for the Thunder. And the Sun changed it up defensively a little bit. They haven't done a lot of man-to-man -man in the last few games, but that time they did play some man-to-man -man and they had this, their safety deep over the top. So the coverage was pretty tight. Again, they're really athletic in the backfield and the Thunder receivers are going to have to work hard to get open if they're going to play man-to-man. -man. Our sideline man, Blaine Wyland, suggested maybe 40 yards, but um, this one just a little too far. If they did try a field goal, it would be like a 45, 46-yard try. 
and they're going to punt. Maximic gets it away, and you can tell he's trying to push it over to the far corner, and it's fielded uh, just inside the 10-yard line. This is O'Shea who gets out to the 10-yard line, and he's brought down, and check that on that play. That's Kamar Bishop on the return. Again, 11-17, hard to recognize in the white on orange on these uniforms. And we'll get another look at the return, but the Sun do get the ball back, trailing by eight points. So it is a one-possession ball game. And nice punt by Maximuk there. Again, got it to turn over, put it close to the sideline, and didn't give Bishop a whole lot of real estate to work with so that the Thunder cover team could get down there and, and wrap them up. And they're starting in pretty deep in their own end here. Makes you a little nervous to be that close to your goal post. So two receivers to his left. And he's got two to his right. He's going to fire over to the far side, and that is complete to Wymack. And he's going to be very close to an Okanagan first down. Yeah, again, a really nice, safe, quick play, getting the ball into Wymack's hands really quickly. O'Shea leading out in front to block, and then Wymack just looks to get upfield off that block. You talked about Wymack coming from Saskatchewan, and we talked about uh, some players coming from Toronto. They really do have a national flavor, and the Thunder bring kids in from all over including Isaiah Woodley from Boston as we see a gang tackle and that's going to result Lost that's a big yards. stop yeah. that's a big stop on second and one yeah that's that's going to put them put the Suns back and now they have to punt you know this three on your own uh, 17 between 17 and 18 yard line like that's I don't know. That's I, not comfort zone. Feels like there's a little bit of indecision over there oh, what they're going like to do. They, yeah, looks like they're going. They're bringing some big guys on there. So they're at least going to line up like they're going to go. Maybe try to draw them off. But Britain is out there, and now we get a stop. Not sure what this is all about. We're not seeing a clear signal. Nobody's called timeout. Yeah. Oh, there is like a timeout. Have, yeah, Again, like, the Thunder. Yeah. Okay. Thunder wanted to make sure they had the right personnel out there, I think. Yeah, and that's a good decision because when there's all those people coming on and off the field, it's really easy to end up with 13 or 11, which, you know, 13 is terrible because that would give uh, Okanagan a first down. 11 could be terrible because it could, could give them a touchdown if you catch them in the spot where they're missing a player. So, yeah, just a good cautious decision there with all the the changes that were happening on both teams just to make sure they've, because this is a huge play. Oh, that's what they're arguing about. Okay, so you can see Scott McCauley looks like he's arguing with the refs, and the refs said they heard him call timeout. He's saying he never called timeout. So there's a dispute right now down there. And that should be, that should be the sideline official's job. Like, that's who the the, the official that should be listening to the head coach if there's a timeout. And if a coach is going to yell timeout, he's probably going to make the timeout signal as well. They're not giving him back his timeout. There's no going back. <laughs> oh, and now they're going to, Britain's going to get up on the line. Again, they could just be trying to draw him off here. We don't know. Play clock down to 10 seconds. So the Thunder have to be really careful here and really disciplined on this snap count. Two, and one, yeah. Yeah, they were just trying to draw them off and the Thunder managed to do their job and not jump offside. And that's a lot harder than it looks, isn't it? Oh, sure, because, you know, it's a crucial play. Like still, you know, common sense wise, you can't imagine that that Okanagan feels that desperate that they need to gamble inside their own 20 yard line on a, on a third and three. So I kind of wonder, you know, now that they're this deep, if they, uh, and they're going into the wind, if they're going to give up a safety here to give up the two points, which, you know, you mentioned before, it's a one score game right now. That would extend it to two scores if they gave up the safety. But again, the field position could be big. So we'll see a punt situation as now they bring out Isaac Wagner and he'll line up in his own end zone and the Thunder should get great field position. No surprise at all that they're just going to concede the safety touch. Give up two points and in favor of field position. Although, you know, I, I don't know that that's a simple choice. I mean, points have been at such a premium. Yeah, game. yeah. But again, Okanagan's going into the wind. And, and it, you don't want to punt out of your own end zone into the wind. Like, that's pretty tough. I'm a little disappointed that the Thunder aren't getting the sun to kick off. Instead, they're electing to take the ball on their own 35-yard line, which is one of the options you can have after a safety. But again, because Okanagan is going into the wind, they're not going to pound the ball deep. So you do have a pretty good chance of decent field position. 
Uh, although the, the Thunder kick return hasn't been super dynamic this year, so maybe the 35 is a safe choice. Maybe they just want to save the seconds. I'm not sure. That would tick off the clock, although that's unlikely. Likert gets the ball. He runs off tackle. He stopped after a pickup of not a bad gainer on first down. I think they're going to give him four. So that'll bring up second and six. And uh, wide open play selection for Stefan Ensign and this Regina Thunder offense. Yeah, and the ball is... Uh, very rarely where it is, right in the middle of the field, so kind of uh, both sides of the field are available. Just a reminder, the Thunder have the wind at their back in this third quarter, and they're likely going to be going into the wind in the fourth quarter. Shuchuk is all surrounded and gets rid of it, and I thought they might call him for grounding, but doesn't look like it. He wasn't outside the tackle box. You could make a case that that was intentional grounding. Yeah, but I think Likert did a good job selling it. Like he was, I think he was the guy in the area and he came flying in there and jumped on that loose ball and made himself look like he was in the area. Uh, again, Kalon Thomas getting in there with pressure. The Sun brought a little bit of extra pressure. They brought five that time, so they had a little bit of extra pass, uh, pass pressure going. The Thunder did a good job initially, but Shuchuk just held on a little too long. So Eric Maximek will line up in punt formation. Gets it away cleanly, an end over ender. And that is grabbed and returned. And not much doing there by number 17, Kamar Bishop. And he has stopped inside his own 45 yard line. I think the Thunder have to be pretty happy with how that all turned out. Yeah, not a great punt. You know, punting right down the middle. Again, it just opens up both sidelines for the punt return team. But Tyler Squidworko, number 30, does a really good job on coverage, fighting off the block, getting in there to get in on the tackle. Uh, Squidorko out of Waka, Saskatchewan, and Waka is one of the six aside teams playing in the provincial final today against the North Valley Eagles out of Lemberg. Bob Mayo's team from the, the little six aside league that I coach in. Busy weekend on the prairies for football. Dom Brenton takes the snap. He'll hand it off to Garwood, who busts loose. Nice run on first down. He's not going to quite have it, but they're going to give him his forward progress. He's going to be very close. Yeah, it, it's. And again, this is going to open things up nice for Okanagan. You know, it's going to be second and about a foot to go. Uh, so you do the safe play and hand it off, or do you take a shot here? I think it's kind of a nice opportunity to take a shot. I, 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 I you don't see it as much anymore. I feel like offensive coordinators in the CFL just like to get that yard. And in the good old days, that's your free play. Right. Like, see what you can do. You might fake like you're going to sneak yeah, it. Yeah, maybe but a play action here. Fake it to Garwood. Yeah. Oh, they just go out. And it's going to hit Mike O'Shea, and he gets loose. He gets around one tackle, but he's tripped up just enough to fall over. Avery Wagner got a big enough piece of him that he wasn't able to get more, but still a nice gainer and a first down for the Okanagan Sun, who are marching now in Thunder territory in the late stages of this third quarter. And for Okanagan, that's definitely their version of a safe play. You know, they love those little uh, dump-off passes to their receivers, those little screens in the open space there. So that's a nice safe play to O'Shea. Easily gets the first down. Shotgun formation for Dom Brenton, and he's flooded all of his receivers over to this right side. But now they're going to switch it up. O'Shea flips to the left. They're just going to run to Garwood. And got Garwood gets loose. He might score on this play. One man to beat. And into the end zone for the touchdown. That's a huge touchdown for the Suns. Great play, just right up the middle of the offensive line, opening up another big hole. They've done a good job of that this drive. A few big holes for Garwood to exploit, and there's just nobody left in the middle for the Thunder. For whatever reason, just nobody in the middle, and that's game on. Justin McCarricker trying to chase him down, but it was little too little, little too late, as Javon Garwood busts free with the home run and now the Sun will try to pull to within a field goal with a point after touchdown attempt by Atwood. And he is good. And now we have just a field goal spread between the two sides as the Sun come roaring right back after giving up the safety touch. And really, you wonder if maybe that decision paid off because they sure. gave up the two, got the ball back in decent field position, and then hit the home run with Garwood. And what makes this drive so impressive is that this is the quarter they're going into the win. So they're taking advantage. You know, they're, they're making hay. They're eating up time running the ball, eating up time in this quarter where the Thunder have the wind advantage. And then to make it even worse for the Thunder, they pop it into the end zone. There's the party in Kelowna. Everybody's getting up for the later stages of this. 
way into that first half. It didn't look so good until that touchdown catch, that great catch by Colby Moletto on the last play of the opening half to turn the momentum, and this will shift it just a little bit more in favor of the Orange guys. Normally living under the sun, playing in the frigid cold of the 306 today. Wagner with the kickoff. It's fielded by Ryland Likert. He's gonna run left. He's up across the 30 and give him the 37 yard line. So, so so field position for the Thunder. And Carter Shuchuk will bring this offense back out. 5.01 to go in the third quarter. And again, that is a pretty important part of the story because the wind is at the Thunder back in this third quarter. And that was a great kick into the wind getting it down to around, uh, I think it was around the 15 yard line where it came down. So uh, Likert got a good return. If you can get it out past the 35, that's usually considered a good return, but still a good kick into the breeze there. 35 yard line, kind of your over under break even point, I guess. And it's handed off to uh, Riger. And Justin Rieger will push it ahead. Give him a couple. I might be generous with that. Yeah, coming off the edge there for the Suns, number 42, Peyton Ryder, their Will linebacker, does a good job getting his shoulder pad in there and slowing Rear down a little bit. Just a gain of about, about one. So at the 38-yard line, second and nine here for Carter Shuchuk in this Regina offense. He spotted his receivers to the wide side, and he throws it. That's intercepted. And coming back the other way, and number 49 on the return for the Okanagan Sun, that's Dawson Puck, and the Sun have momentum and a short porch to work with after that interception by big number 49, Dawson Puck. That time, Okanagan just dropped into their zone. They had four-man rush, so no big pressure, and that's just a big miss. I'm not sure what Shuchuk was hoping for there because the intended receiver was double covered, plus Puck was underneath, and it just went right into his hands. So huge play, they're starting off on the 32 yard line. I don't know if we'll get an opportunity to see that replay again, but I almost wonder if Shuchuk's hands were hit as he threw that football. And they hand off to Garwood who moves over to the right side. And that's a four yard pickup for Javon Garwood. And we'll get another shot. I'm just curious and, and maybe not, but we'll see. So Shuchuk, you can tell is throwing the football. I don't think no. so. He had one guy who was close and coming off the edge Number 16, Romero Reed got close, but I don't think he actually made contact with his hands. So great play by Puck, the linebacker, to come up with that interception. Here's Britton in shotgun formation, throws to the wide side and it is complete. And that's caught over there by number six. And again, that's Nathan Tonagai who's been dangerous, you know, they've used him in certain situations um, on some of these short passes, but that could be really effective here as it sets up a very manageable third and one. So again, be aware of the bootleg going over to that left side by Britton. And he's being pressured, he gets hit as he throws, and that one's into the end zone for the touchdown, Mike O'Shea. Boy, that's like Adam King held up on that, he was beat, and then he recovered because the ball forced O'Shea to hold up a little bit and King just held off. Like at that point, when you see the receiver waiting for the ball, just tackle him. Take the pass interference penalty. It's only 15 yards in amateur football. Don't let him catch an easy touchdown like that. You know, he's right there and he just held up. Do Dom Britton nearly got smoked. Well, he did get smoked, but he got the ball out before Kenton Effa took him down and very nearly had a quarterback sack but he got rid of the ball. Nice catch by Mike O'Shea in the end zone and the Sun have the lead. And the point after touchdown attempt is good. Liam Atwood splits the uprights and my oh my has this game gone topsy-turvy. No kidding and especially in this third quarter where the Sun are going in. I mentioned it on the last score. So they're, they're just uh, taking advantage of some great plays. You know, Adam King got beat on a play like that in the third quarter a couple weeks ago against Saskatoon when the Thunder had a big lead and and uh, some of the guys on defense got a little bit undisciplined with their eyes and with their responsibilities. And, you know, you hope that when that happens, you learn the lesson. But, boy, the, the people back out in Kelowna, they're having a good time now. There's going to be extra pints being poured after that one. Party in the Okanagan especially tonight if this whole if this score holds but there's a ton of football left to be played and you know give Travis Miller and his staff credit for the adjustments that they would have made at the half 
and we'll see if what the Thunder can counter with and what they have left. Trailing by four, but at one point this was a 15-0 ball game, and so 21 of the last 23 points have been scored by the Okanagan Sun. And like 25 years ago this week, our Regina Okanagan Championship game is turning out to be a classic. Off the kickoff, here's Likert up the left side. He's pushed out of bounds, might be flagged for a late hit out of bounds. I don't see a no. flag down there, and that's Michael Jordan who uh, got a piece of Likert as he was stepping out of bounds. Yeah, that was right on the sideline. I don't think there's any flag there. But a good return, so great blocking out in front. And then Likert does what you want your kickoff returner to do. Just find that 18 inches of daylight, like Gail Sayers said way back in the day. Sneak through there and keep your track shoes going. Okay, Shuchuk in shotgun formation again. Barking out signals and fakes the handoff. He's going to fire. Sokol gets the pass. No, that's going to fall incomplete. And in hot pursuit on Ryland Sokol. You can see Garrett Cape helping break that one up. We'll look at it again. Yeah, that's a pass that normally we'd expect Ryland Sokol to make. He sat down in that little hole in the zone and Shuchuk put it just where it needed to be, but he just couldn't hang on. You wonder if it's because of the coverage or what it is. They just have not been able to use him a lot today so far. I, I, yeah, I still think he's not 100%. I think that's maybe the biggest reason. So Carter Shuchuk working out of the gun. And they're coming on the blitz. He gets a complete to Likert, follows his blocks, trips up around midfield. He's going to be very close to a first down. Yeah, the spot on the far side looks like about a foot short. So huge play. That's a great play on that little screen. And uh, there's only four-man pressure. They let it through, but then good job blocking out in front. And then Likert just goes north-south, or in this case, south-north. Yeah, and just about gets the first down. And they've still got the wind, a uh, little over two minutes to go in the third quarter, and you know, you want to work with that. But on the flip side of it, the Sun have proven you can score going into the wind as well. Uh oh, they stopped him. They stopped him. Oh my. They, they brought that jumbo set in, and you can see everybody's fired up over on that Okanagan sideline. And we get a look at the linebacker marching over there, Romero Reed, who's been close to the action all day. We'll get another look at it. But what at one point looked like a routine third and one quarterback sneak. They hand it off probably a little bit deeper in the backfield than some would like to see. Well, you know, I mentioned it in the first half. Okanagan really stacks up the middle, and I, I just don't think there's a lot of opportunity for success when you run into those A and B gaps. You want to get a little bit more outside. Big play by the Okanagan defense, and with the lead, Britton will throw it to Wymack on the near side. He's knocked down by a couple of defenders, and you can see Avery Wagner in on the play, uh, as is Kenton Effa. We've been saying his name a lot. He's been close to the football all afternoon. Yeah, that time the coverage was kind of rolled over to that side. So you saw number 20 for the Thunder getting in there, Brandon Janata, and taking on the block, taking the blocker out of the play, and then letting those other two defenders fly, fly in there and stop it for about four yards. How about Mike O'Shea showing he knows how to block too? He oh, can yeah. kick return, he can all receive. These, he all can... these Okanagan receivers can block. Oh, and that one is dropped. And that's one that that receiver would dearly love to have back as it was right off the fingertips of Nathan Tonaguy. That's two drops for him. I'm really surprised, like watching other games for Okanagan, like he's so sure-handed, he's such a key guy. It's and, almost like uh, when he's wide open, he's having trouble, yeah. but in tight coverage, he can make the catch. Like in the first half, he had that drop and then they went away from him for a while. And then last drive, they went back to him and boy, that's uh, that's kind of a head shake, right? I wouldn't expect that out of him. Kind of feels like a bit of a backbreaker too when you're on second and uh, six and mm -hmm. now they've got to punt the football away. So the Thunder catch a break and we'll see if they're able to take advantage as Wagner will come in to punt once again, who's done a great job for the most part, and not a great kick away. It'll bounce around, and again, they have to chase it down on the near sideline. That's Ford who gets a piece of it because they know that Wagner's not afraid to run after it. Wagner was about seven yards away when he jumped on top of that football. Yeah, and it's in a kick like this where it bounced back toward the sideline, again, maybe a little bit more panic than, than Isaac Ford needed to show because all you have to do is just knock it out of bounds. As long as you're the last one to touch the ball, you know, just, just dive over there and knock it down. You don't have to jump on it like it's a hand grenade. And even if you punch it, I mean, if even if it does hit a leg from somebody else or whatever, well, yeah, I guess you need to swipe it out so the other side doesn't get possession. But right. it's been a bit of an adventure. Reichert on the right side tries to fight his way free and that looks like a pretty good run on first down 
four yards I think they're going to give them. And that will be second and six from the Thunder 40-yard line. So there you see the, again, the Okanagan defensive line doing a good job. They're, the Thunder O line is big and strong, but the, uh, the Suns are just getting on, taking half a man, trying to squeeze down those gaps to close up the running lanes for Riker, uh, Likert. Shuchuk out of the gun, has most of his receivers to the right side. He's going deep for Sokol, and it's up very nearly intercepted. It falls incomplete. Kamar Bishop very close to settling under that one like a center fielder for the interception, but it falls incomplete. Yeah, the Thunder really dodged a bullet there because if you look at Sokol, he's not, he can't sprint. You know, he's, he's just, he's operating at about 70%. It looks like he can't get that pass, so... Um, yeah, I don't know if that's the that's the shot you want to take. You know, they've got they've got Woodley, they've got Ford, guys that can get downfield, but Sokol just doesn't have it today. It looks like because of that injury. We'll step aside and come back with more on Championship Saturday here on Access Now Sports and CJFL TV. At Access, our products are as reliable as our famous customer service. We got a solution for everybody. At my home, I use Access Next TV Stream. With the 72 hour window on Next TV Stream, you're able to go back and view a show that you might have missed or something that you realize that you forgot to record. That just gives you that extra flexibility to watch the entertainment that you want. At Access Communications, we're all about you. We've talked about some of the classic matchups, and this is the last time that Regina and Okanagan met in a championship game. And this was the first time, actually, the only other time. And November of 1997, this game was played in Kelowna, BC. And uh, under the old overtime rules, it went to overtime. They played the both overtimes. And there we see the connection. And I don't know if this is the play to Jason Claremont. It is. And this looks like the game-winning drive. And then we see the flip, and this is going to be Jason Claremont diving over the goal line to win the Canadian Bowl in 1997. I remember listening to this game on the radio. Probably the most exciting Canadian Bowl maybe ever. I have to confess I haven't seen all 114 of them, so <laughs> it's a bit of a stretch. Sometimes best game ever is a little bit overused, but uh, that one in the conversation. Maxima gets it away. And it looks like the Okanagan defender got a piece of him. We'll look at the replay later. And here's the run back, about a 10 yard run back. But I think the man who came in and got a piece there, looks like it was Dawson Puck who got a piece of Eric Maximuk. There's no penalty flag. And I'm not saying that one was warranted, but it was very nearly blocked. Yeah, Cause Okanagan doesn't bring, yeah, that was just uh, the blocker that got pushed into Maximuk. It wasn't uh, the, the punt rusher that got the contact there. And that's, that's a little bit unusual for Okanagan because they usually like to set up their return with all those dynamic uh, returners they have back there. That time they tried to bring a little bit of pressure and it almost got there. Sun will be happy to just churn up clock on this drive and continue to move the football. Oh, and he fakes the pass. He hands it to Garwood and somebody got their hands up in his face and I think that might be what the penalty flag is all about, although the flag is way away from that. Yeah, there's a flag in the backfield, so I think it's a hold. That's usually what it is against the offense, and that's what it is here. Yeah, so that's a, that's an easy penalty to accept, moving back 10 yards and put them in first and 20. Holding, Okanagan, 57. Penalty is declined, Ooh. second out. Okay, I'm really surprised by that. Usually uh, a holding penalty, you just want to go ahead and take that because it's pretty tough to get to guarantee 10 yards on an offensive play. So instead, they're going to set up, the, the, they're going to allow them to, instead of first and 20, it'll be second and 13. Yeah, usually you see them just accept it to take the field position, but second and 13, and this is a completion over on the near side, and he's brought down as Stephen Smith makes the tackle, and that was to Garwood. We've seen him coming out of the backfield, but they actually threw it to him there. So it actually pays off for the Thunder because they get the stop and it appears to be a punting situation for the Okanagan Sun. Yeah, shows what I know. Coach McCauley's smarter <laughs> than me, makes the good decision there. Good play by Steve Smith, flying over there and making that open field tackle because if he misses that, Garwood's still running. So this will set up a third and seven for the Okanagan Sun. It's a four point game. The Thunder have their return men, Gary and Miller, 
way back inside his own 25 yard line. And another man on the near side. So they've got two men deep to accept this punt from Isaac Wagner. Wagner gets it up in the air and it is caught just inside the 20 yard line. And here is the run back and tackled on the play. And that's Isaac Ford with the run back. He ends up at the 26 yard line and that's where the Thunder will scrimmage first and 10. Yeah, nice punt by Wagner and nice coverage by the Sun getting down there in their lanes, making some good tackles on Ford. And the Thunder, they, this is an important drive. They've got to get something going here to try and get some of this momentum back and keep, uh, keep that Okanagan offense on the sideline for a while. We'll be interesting to see how much ground and pound they try to do or if they try to open up this passing game a little bit. Very potent passing game throughout the season. And it's handed off to Rylan Likert. And he is tackled in the backfield by Puck, that linebacker again, who had the interception a little bit earlier, makes another big play there. That's a super big play. You just He wasn't uh, blitzing or anything. He was just kind of reading the play. And then when he saw it, just came knifing through that gap and makes a great lower body tackle on Likert. So second and 12 coming up for the Regina Thunder at their own 26 yard line. Carter Shuchuk working in the gun. Barking out signals. He's got three receivers to his right. As he stops and looked like he was gonna step into it and he's hit as he throws. And it wasn't sure, it looked like an incompletion at first, but there was, the, the whistle was a little bit late and it seemed like they thought maybe it was a sideways lateral, but either way it falls incomplete. Shuchuk takes the hit and it's third and 12, another punt situation for the Thunder. Yeah, and I don't really think that Okanagan's doing that much differently. Like that time they only bought, brought a three-man pressure, so they might be having one of their players just kind of hang back and spy Shuchuk a little bit, but they just dropped into their usual cover four, four guys deep, four guys kind of in the middle zones, and uh, the Thunder just aren't able to get open, and, and they're not able to protect Shuchuk on that three-man pressure. Eric Maxima gets the punt away. It'll be fielded just outside the 50-yard line, and Bishop... Cuts outside, looks like he has a lane. He has a lane, he's outside. He's got two men to beat. Gets by Maximuk and steps out of bounds. Maximum got a piece of him, but uh, finally pushing him out, number nine. Ify Adabogan likely saved a touchdown for the Thunder. Yeah, I don't know what happened to number 51, Devin Bauman. You'll see him right at the point of attack, right there. I don't know if that was a block from behind, because if it was, that was the key, the key incident that got that open field. Uh, all that open space for Bishop to get to the sideline. So I don't know if that should have been called a, a block in the back or a hold or something, or if, or if Bauman just, uh, just was a little bit out of control, just didn't have his body in balance. So the, again, a short porch to work with for the Okanagan Sun at the 23 yard line. And again, we're not sure about the field goal range for Liam Outwood, the kicker, uh, but really, really critical that the Thunder keep it to just three and nothing more at this point to keep it a one possession ball game. Again, still lots of time on the clock. There's obviously time to have multiple scores, but just the way the game is going, you get the feeling that they want to keep it a one possession game at this point. This is where the traffic gets heavy as we have a bit of a delay. Eric Maximuk shaken up mm. on the play as he's coming off, but this is where the traffic gets heavy and the going gets tough. And, you know, throughout the season, uh, again, neither one of these teams have, Playoffs and regular season uh, combined, both of these teams have combined for three losses since before the pandemic. And uh, overall, Okanagan has had a wider margin of victory in those games, but it could be argued that the Thunder have had a tougher schedule. And we're seeing just what we expected, and that's a very hotly contested championship game on this frozen tundra of Mosaic Stadium, and they stop Garwood dead in his tracks in the backfield as we see a couple of tacklers led by Reese McCormick. Yeah, Reese McCormick, one of the first team all Canadians for the Thunder, has been pretty quiet this game. The, the Suns have been doing a good job neutralizing him, but that time he gets in and makes a huge play to put the Sun into negative yardage on first down. So that's the kind of play that they need because I'm not really, you know, just watching the convert kicking that uh, that Atwood's been doing. I, I don't know how much length he's got out of, out of his legs, so I don't know if he's going to be able to kick much of a field goal. Reed Rabbit's also helping out on containment of Garwood. So here's Britton on a critical second and 13. He's going to rainbow it up in the air. That's going to fall incomplete. Miles Bistritson 
or uh, correction, Justin McCarricker in tight coverage and the intended receiver, Mike O'Shea, and it'll fall incomplete. What a play or critical stop here for the Thunder. Yeah, good coverage by McCarricker out of LaRange up in northern Saskatchewan. Uh, does a good job staying deeper than the deepest on top of O'Shea and he's in better position to make a play than O'Shea is. So good job by McCarricker there. So third and 13. So if they did try the field goal here, it would be a 34 yard ish and try. That's what they're lining up. Yeah. They're going to try Raid at just inside the 35 yard line. This is Liam Atwood. This will be interesting because this is not a chip shot, even at the pro level. And missed field goals can be explosive plays at all levels. Oh, and he bobbled the snap and pile up at the 36 yard line. It's not going to matter. It's going to be first down for the Regina Thunder at the 35 yard. I was kind of excited to see what would happen. <laughs> and still an exciting play. And the Thunder will take it as they take over on downs and keep it at a four point game. We'll look at the replay. Yeah, that snap wasn't a terrible snap, but it looked like, looked like it just came in really hot. And uh, O'Shea's hands probably a little bit cold. The ball just slipped through. And uh, so that's, a, you know, like you talked about a minute ago, keeping it within a one score game. That's a huge turn of events for the Thunder. Beautiful afternoon on a chilly day, but a great atmosphere, I should say. Beautiful atmosphere. Throw over the middle, and that is complete to Isaac Ford, and that will be a first down Regina. They're going to spot it up at the 45-yard line, and there's a late penalty flag down. Looked like Kamar Bishop got fell to the turf. I don't know if he was thrown. And that's a long way away from the play, that flag. I didn't see any Thunder players over there, so I have no idea what happened. And I should go through, too. We see J.P. Chorney, but uh, the umpire is Mike Klassen. Sharon Airy is the down judge. Deepak Sharma is the line judge. The Ooh. side judge is Rod Hazen. Unnecessary roughness on the Thunder. It's a bad penalty. At the conclusion of the play, unnecessary roughness. Regina, 76, tourist hit. 15 yards mm. from the end of the play, first and 10, Regina. So those are the kind of hits that they're trying to take out of football. The tourist hits where there's a, a bystander that's not really involved in the play and can't protect themselves, and somebody just comes in and, and hits them when they don't know what's coming. A and there it is Lomo. right there. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's a good call. That you got to call that stuff. Needless, completely needless, unnecessary. Carter Shuchuk will line up first and 10 as they just march it back. And he's being pressured, hit as he throws, it falls incomplete. There's gonna be a flag down, and it looks like it's gonna be defensive pass interference. They were aiming for Isaac Ford. Yeah, I think Garrett Cape just got a little bit anxious there, like he was in good position. He was he could have reached in and make the play, but I think he just got a little impatient and, and there was early contact on the receiver. We'll get the official call. And uh, Mark Hetherington is the back judge. Adam Demaniak is the field judge. And yes, it will be pass interference against the Okanagan Sun. Garrett Cape out of Prince George, BC. Pass interference. Okanagan, number two. Ball he plays at the spot of the foul. First down. So it moves him just a little closer to midfield. Getting a look at it again. And again, that, you know, you don't like to see your quarterback just chucking it up in the middle of the field like that. But the Thunder kind of got away with one there. And this is handed to Likert. He spins off one tackle, not another. You can tell that the Okanagan defense read it perfectly. Great penetration, and they knock Likert backwards. Yeah, I don't know if they're doing something different up front or what, but they're just having their way with the Thunder O-line, which has been such a strength for the team this year. Like, that's just great penetration by Okanagan. And driving him down... Uh, along with a host of other tacklers, number 42 on that play, R Peyton Ryder. And Boy, this is that Thomas that's injured? No. Number 16? 49. Oh, 49. Well, we got 49, man, down that puck. puck. Yeah, yeah who the, made the two big plays. Yeah, he's had a big second half here, so. Came up with the interception and then the Oh, and 16 as well. Field. You can yep. see Reed is, is kind of limping off the field, and Reed has, has been a force all game long, so. That's a couple of big concerns for Okanagan in this second half in a three-point or four-point game. Dawson Puck, the linebacker, and Romero Reed, the defensive linemen, have been ever so critical to this front seven of the Okanagan defense and both having to step aside, at least momentarily. And Regina has the ball, second and 10. Long 10. 
This is a big play. Shuchuk flips it over. Reichert has it. He spins off one man, not another, as he's tripped up at the 50-yard line. Really didn't get much out of that. Three-yard pickup. This will bring up third and seven. Likely a punt situation for Eric Maxima yeah, and that, the Regina punt team. That time, the timing just wasn't there. He threw the ball a little too quick, and you can see the blockers didn't have a chance to get out in front of Leichert, so he was one on two as uh, the two linebackers from the Sun were just right there to make the tackle, led by number 42, Peyton Ryder. So Maximuk in punt formation. It just one man deep for Okanagan. You can see Kamar Bishop, the only man back, just inside his 30. And Maximuk gets it away, not an especially deep punt, but it rolls to about the 33. Bishop will pick it up. And he's first met by Miles Bistritz and about three other guys. Battle away from the play. Involving one of the Thunder players over there, number 50. That was Xander Tate getting mixed up with one of the Okanagan blockers as we get another look at it here. Bishop just picks it up and watch at the top of your screen. I guess that's mm -hmm. number 19 who he was mixing it up with uh, over there. And that was uh, Jacob Bond, the special teams player. Nothing comes of it. And Okanagan will start at their own 40-yard line. Again, we dearly love to chew up some of this clock. Now running under nine minutes. Dom Britton takes the snap, hands it off to Garwood, and he busts loose up the middle. That's going to be a first down. Yeah, and luckily it's only just a first down for uh, for the Thunder's sake before number 52, Kent Neff, makes that ankle tackle because if he doesn't make that tackle, Garwood's got a lot of open space right up the middle of the field. Nothing but real estate and Brandon Janata in front of them. So they'll set up first and 10 at their own 50 yard line. First and 10. We see Britton who's done a pretty good job handling the cold and the elements of Mosaic Stadium today. He fires it, that's caught by Mike O'Shea and he's met by a couple of tacklers and boy they have all they can handle trying to bring down number 11. Yeah, Brandon Janata jumped that, that uh, nice catch by O'Shea pretty quickly, but O'Shea is just strong and keeps trying to weasel his way out of that tackle and gets a good gain on first down. They got about eight yards. He's so different from Mike O'Shea Sr. because he's a receiver, not a linebacker, but yet they're similar. They're tough. They seem to perform in the cold. They do special teams. Fascinating. Love the special teams. Love yeah. the special teams. So Britton in shotgun formation. He's got three receivers to his right side. He throws over the middle and nice play to break it up. Just getting a hand on it is Adam King, the safety. And what a big play that is. That was a huge play. That time the Thunder brought a lot of pressure. So Britton had to get rid of the ball quickly. He had two guys in his face. And Adam King that time in perfect trail position on Colby Mileto and reaches, uses good technique. He uses the left hand to reach across. So he's got the right hand just in case he misses and he can grab on to make the tackle. But that's a big play. They're gambling on third and two. We expect a long snap count here. They might be just trying to draw him off. You never know. And Britton's taking his time. They still don't know exactly what they're doing. There seems to be a bit of confusion at that Okanagan sideline. And they're going to run a play. There's that bootleg. And he throws it to the wide side. And it falls incomplete. He was looking for Wymack. And there are two men in coverage. And it's a turnover on downs for the Thunder, who will get the ball back close to midfield at their own 52. Yeah, I'm a little surprised they went for that. And, and they've shown that before. You know, that's one of their favorite plays. Just doing the fake handoff, the bootleg by the quarterback. And this one's tough for Britton because he's rolling to his left and being a right-handed quarterback, it's tough to get your hips around and make that good throw because it's got to be perfect, uh, perfect position on a, a quick out like that. So Carter Shuchuk has all of his receivers to the left side. He takes the snap and hands it to Rylan Leichert who gets outside. He bellies off a few tackles and gets loose and turned what looked like to be a nothing run into something. And the Thunder, I don't know if he picked up, the, if he got enough yeah, for the first did. down where he got the spot. Like Kellen Thomas, or Kalan Thomas, like he's in the backfield in no time. And yet somehow Leichert gets past him and fights his way through two tacklers and gets a first down. I don't know how he did that. That was an amazing play, amazing individual effort. Great tiptoe job, too, along the sideline to pick up an extra yard or two at the end of that play. Shuchuk fakes the hand. No, he does do the handoff and uh, fake me out. Didn't fake anybody else out, including the Okanagan front seven. As you see, the tackle made by big number 
42 for the Okanagan Sun. That's Peyton Ryder who gets the stop. Yeah, that was a good call by the defensive coaching staff of Okanagan, sending Peyton Rad Ryder, the Will linebacker, on a blitz right to the point of attack the Thunder were going after, and they bring him down for a big loss, about uh, four yards. Kwan Thomas helping out on the tackle as well. No surprise there. Second and long here, obvious passing situation. Shuchuk fires it to the near side, and that's complete to Woidla, who gets away from one tackle, not the second, but he's very close to a Regina first down. Yeah, that's a long, long pass for Shuchuk and for Woidla to be standing out there just waiting for that ball. It seems like it takes an eternity, but he does a good job fighting back inside and trying to knife through the tacklers here and get as many yards as he can. So they're, they're about a little over a yard, about a yard and a half, a little less than a yard and a half to go. So this is a huge, huge play with 550 left in a four point game. Talk about using the wide side. Brought up memories mm -hmm. of Ken Austin to BK Williams where he would fire 50 yards for a nine yard out. One sideline to the other. Hands off to Ryland Likert. There's flags all over the place. Likert looks like he's short. Yeah, I think he is short, but I also, judging by how fast those flags came out, I have to think that uh, Okanagan was lined up offside again, which would be a, a really crucial penalty. Coming back to bite them, that was a problem in the first, first quarter. Half, they seemed yeah. to be past it, and yeah, but we'll see. Yeah, and so like usual, yards. looks like Halsey's right. Offside, Okanagan, entire defensive line. Yeah. Five yards, first down. That's a frustrating penalty like I, <laughs> I was talking about the Okanagan coaching staff and you know just looking through the window here they're they're not quite as contained as they were they're, in the well first they're not half. going crazy <laughs> but you can just tell that yeah. you know that's just a super frustrating yeah. penalty for a coach yeah okay first and ten Regina at the Okanagan 32 yard line trailing by four and he'll hand it off to Reichert who Ooh. takes a big hit at the end of that play and there's a flag that comes down late that was about a three yard pickup and I see some shouting by the Okanagan coaching staff. That leads me to believe this is gonna be a penalty against the Sun. Yeah, I don't like, that was a super solid hit. I don't know if, if they're calling uh, it came, helmet to helmet or what? It came in so late, which makes me wonder, was it, was it the hit or was it something after yeah. the hit that we just didn't see? So we're we'll gonna get a one conference. Of the, one of the Okanagan players waving his hands like they're, they're maybe talking about it. So maybe the sideline official thought it was a helmet to helmet hit. Ooh, and it looks like it was. It looked like he definitely came It was a vicious hit. In. Yeah. And then the ball came loose, but I think he was down by that point. And again, number 39. Oh, and they're oh. waving it off. No. Nope. But I think, and, and again, there's been so many changes over the years. Sometimes it's hard to really ascertain, but in some levels, I guess he's a runner at that point. What's allowed? Yeah, it's not yeah, a, he's not a spearing, defensive. Yeah, he's not a defensive player in any way. Yeah. but you still can't. That's a lead, rule. You know, that's always been a rule. Yeah, helmet yeah. to helmet. Yeah, yeah, you can't you can't spear uh, spear like that. Yeah, you're right. That's been a, a rule forever. So we'll get a probably a good angle here. Oh yeah, like he his helmet, the crown of his helmet looked like it caught him right on the cage. Yeah. So the referee on the sideline that made that flag or threw that flag, you know, I think he was right. And I'm not sure which official Waved overruled him yeah. and, and said no, it was it was shoulders. Boy, and and you feel bad for Likert because that was a hellacious hit yeah. that he took yeah. right in the right in the cage. Yeah, and and so often we see those penalties and we think, well, the game is changing. Well, that's not a new penalty, like you said. No, that's no. been around forever. So, shotgun formation for Shuchuk and looks like he's going to try and run and he's not going to get much. Well, he got a little bit more than I thought he would. Ended up with a gain of about four. He need the, to get the first down. They need to get to the 27, and they're at about the 30. Call it the 33. So yeah, third and six. Yeah. Would you dare think about a field goal at this point? I mean, you would dare. You've got a good kicker, but like I said before, he's in the playoffs. He hasn't been getting really solid contact, especially into the wind, which they're. The wind looks like it's really whipping down there and he'd be kicking right into it. Thir three down territory for the Thunder and they throw it and it's broken up, incomplete. That's gonna be a turnover on downs as the aim was for Ryland Sokol. And boy, oh boy, that non-call looms large. And yeah, and I mean on that play, that's just fantastic coverage. Again, we don't have number 39's name on our roster here, so I'm not sure who that is, but he came in, again, just textbook. He's got his left hand around the back, the right hand 
comes through to knock down the ball. Um, you know, like the left hand was on his back, but it didn't interfere with the official or with the referees, or sorry, the receiver's chance to make the, the catch. So I don't think that's a penalty. I think that's just a great defensive play. So Don Brenton's going to try to chew up as much clock as he can. You can hear the crowd here trying to make noise to help out their defense. And there's Reed Rabbits running down Javon Garwood. Doing what that front three of the Regina defense does best, and that's slicing and dicing up whoever the running back is on the other side. And you see uh, Bisritzen got a piece of him first. Yeah, and the Thunder brought pressure. We can assume that they're probably gonna keep bringing pressure here to try and force the Suns, try and force a, an incomplete pass or get some penetration like that one and make a tackle in the backfield. Trying to get the ball back here and Oh boy. He looks long and looks deep and it looked like he stopped running and he, over on the far side there he was looking for Garwood and it, it just didn't he didn't look comfy he's not a wide receiver well, but. and I don't know if it was that or you know right where uh, Britain's throwing from is kind of right out of the sun the angle that the sun's coming into the stadium right now good point so I kind of wonder if Garwood because it looked like you're right he just kind of stopped I don't think he even saw the football I don't think it was like he gave up and thought I can't get it I, I just don't think he was able to he, see it he was wide open by miles but oh. you just when the ball was in the air it so just didn't open. look like it just didn't look like they were going to connect yeah and so. you know it's a low sun it's later in the afternoon it's coming right at that angle so I, I kind of guess that's maybe what affected him there they played the game early in the day today hoping we'd get some sunlight and uh, I was down at field level and I have to say I think that was a good choice on a day like today Wagner gets the kick away, and Gary and Miller is going to have it bounce past him. He's going to try and field it, and he does, and he's gang tackled. There's about five Okanagan players who surround him and bring down the Regina kick returner at his own 30-yard line, and looks like we'll get one more play before the three-minute warning. Yeah, Wagner's pretty jacked up after that punt, and he should be. He really flipped the field by putting it over the returner's head. And, you know, that's just the key in, in punt return and kick return. You have to catch the ball in the air. And uh, and I just think um, Miller was a little bit tentative getting after it. You know, there's two returners back there. There's lots of room. You should have been able to catch that ball. Shuchuk drops back and he fires it to the near side. That's gonna fall incomplete. Nice play in tight coverage by the linebacker Peyton Ryder and it falls incomplete but you know there's some good synergy you talked about Isaac Wagner the Okanagan Sun have won two championships ever 1988 and 2000 and I was mentioning earlier that the 1988 Grey Cup was won I feel like I, I, there's a lot of synergy between Bob Cameron that day winning the mm. cup for Winnipeg and Isaac Wagner's played a pretty important role in this game for Okanagan as well in the wind and the cold second and ten Carter Shuchuk he fires over the middle, and that is complete to Isaiah Woodley. And it fell out of his hands after well, he hit the turf. It, yeah. I think they're calling it a reception. The, yeah. the back judge came in there, pointed to the, the turf, which I think indicates that he went down before the ball came out. That's what it looked like with yeah. the naked eye. The replay might tell us something different. The but replay. that was, boy, that was a great pass by Shuchuk. So kind of threw over top of Sokol as the defensive backs came up and then that left a little bit more room for Woodley to cut in behind. I think that was the right call after looking at the replay. Shuchuk will go to the far side and that one is complete. This is Wojtyla trying to get loose and it's another first down. It takes four men to wrap him up at the 45 yard line of Okanagan. The Thunder are marching. Yeah, that's the second time they've gone to that play in this quarter and it's worked well for yards both times. This time for a big first down conversion and again, that just takes a lot of mental toughness by Woyland, knowing that, that those Sun defenders are bearing down on him as that ball takes so long to get there, but he makes a good hands catch and cuts up field. High drama and then some. Shuchuk takes the snap, he'll fire it to the far side. I think that's Woodley who he's connected with. And it is, it's really no gain. So that'll bring up second and 10. Still lots of time. But yeah, again, Shuchuk just kind of underthrew that one. Looked like he didn't have a great handle on the ball. And so Woodley doesn't have a, cha a chance to do anything after he goes down low to make the catch. Seems like they've had some success with Woodley going toward Woodley like and uh, Wojtyla on these outside routes. Shuchuk back to pass, steps into it and throws and there's nobody oh, there. Flag. Oh, and there's a flag. It might be a late hit. Yeah, it's by Shuchuk. So I don't know if that's maybe uh, Romario Reed that got called. 
Yeah, unnecessary roughness, roughing the passer. I think it's gonna be Kalon Thomas. Thomas was the one arguing it, so the penalties may be against Reed. We'll get the official call here from J.P. Charney. Unnecessary roughness, roughing the passer. Okanagan, number nine, yeah. 15 yards for Oh down. boy, again, that <laughs> borderline at best. Yeah. Yeah, that's a ways from the border, I think. It's a bad yeah. break for the Suns, good break for the Thunder, for sure. Shotgun formation for Shuchuk again. And throws it over the middle, and this is complete, and this is Isaiah Woodley. He cuts outside, he's gonna try and stay in bounds, and he does until the 15-yard line, and they're gonna mark him out. Oh, he's hobbling. He's gonna try and run it off, but he is hobbling noticeably, and that matters. I was gonna say that 15-yard penalty just now, maybe, which we thought was kind of a questionable, <laughs> questionable call. Yeah, maybe evened out from that one that got waved off a few minutes ago. Yeah, we've seen a couple more, and again, the, the refs are doing the best job they yeah, can, and yeah. they do a pretty good job. I'd say. I, was, I was talking to the refs before the game, and they're all bundled up, and I said, boy, I sure don't want to be you today. Yeah. And the, one of the refs said, when does anybody ever want to be us? <laughs> Which I thought was pretty clever. <laughs> Minute 49 to go. Shuchuk flips it, and he dumps it off for Riker, and he's knocked down right away. So they get a positive gainer. It's only going to be a couple, though. Second and eight coming up from the Okanagan 13-yard line. Time really not a factor at this point on this drive. Great job coming in there once again by uh, weak side linebacker Peyton Ryder. Knifes through and makes a solid tackle for a short gain. What a finish we have in store. So the clock is running and you can cut the tension with a knife here at Mosaic Stadium. Carter Shuchuk puts it up into the end zone and that one probably closer to being intercepted than it was to being caught. It falls incomplete as they were looking for Isaiah Woodley who we saw hobbling moments ago. Some pretty good coverage by the defensive back uh, Michael Jordan who was probably closer to getting the interception although the ball was out of the reach of either one. Yeah, that was great coverage. He was over, t over top the whole way. No way he was letting Woodley get behind him. So big, big third and eight play right now for the Thunder. This this could be the game right here. They need to get to the five yard line in order to get a first down. Shuchuk's going for the end zone. There's nobody there and that's gonna fall incomplete. There are no flags anywhere. The Sun will take over on downs with a minute 19 left. Yeah. and. I think if Rylan Sokol's 100%, I think he can get off that coverage, but here he just ran into the defensive back and then just couldn't get disengaged from him. You know, he just doesn't have the explosiveness, the push off that he needs to get away from number 39 for the Sun. So, you know, I, I don't think that was a bad call. I think that's that's a good call to, to just let, the, let them play there. Um, again, I, I just, I'm not sure that Sokol today is, is able to make those plays that we're used to him making. Does Paul Dawson, the defensive coordinator in his unit, have one more stop left in them? Britton will hand the ball off to Garwood and he's stopped, brought down by Reed Rabbits. That'll be a positive gain of about three yards. Second and seven coming up here for the Okanagan offense. And this is probably where the Thunder will take a timeout. Yeah, so they take a timeout because when they're on defense, they don't have control of the clock unless they take a timeout. So you want to use your timeouts on defense in this situation. Once the offense gets on the field, it's up to them to manage the clock. And yet, remember, early in the half, the Thunder kind of got burned on that one timeout that they didn't call, uh, that the officials thought they called. And so that was their only timeout left. So uh, at this point now, when it gets a second down, I'm sure the Sun will keep the ball on the ground so the clock will run when it's whistled in. Uh, that's the, the Thunder's last opportunity to stop the clock. Well, they were expecting somewhere close to 5,000 people at Mosaic Stadium today, and of the people who showed up, I don't think many of them have left. And this has just been a great game from top to bottom, and this is a critical play right here. You talk about a play being the game. Well, the Thunder desperately need a stop on this play to prevent the Sun from sewing it up. And O'Shea is going to sweep around the right side. And they wrap him up. And there's a fumble. Ooh. The ball's loose. I think the Sun recovered. But, oh, boy, that just about turned into the Panasonic play of the game. Still no, no signal. 
And it looks like they're gonna retain possession. So it's gonna be third and short for Okanagan. And how close are they? They're a wow. yard and a half away. Two yards, looks like a good solid two yards. As we see, I'm just trying to see, yeah, the ball clearly came loose and it, yeah, it looked like it clearly was recovered. Yeah, I mean, you know, jersey. you put the ball in the hands of your best player, which is a good decision, but that was just a good solid tackle that popped it out on O'Shea. So uh, again, the Sun just super fortunate to have this opportunity for a third down punt. Showing punt formation here. And again, they could be just trying to draw them off. We don't know. Well, they'll just use up Either all way. the time. They'll maybe and take a time it. count violate. Oh, no. Oh, they're giving up a safety. Interesting. And he's going to burn up as much clock as he can, and they're going to have to get him cornered in that end zone. And he's going to run outside and finally give up the two points. So Isaac Wagner does his job, gets the clock down to 35 seconds. So, and now when you look at the ribbons down, they're not blowing as much. Well, still going into the wind if you're the mm -hmm. Thunder, but it makes you wonder because that's where the complexion changes. All of, the th all of a sudden, the Thunder don't need a touchdown to win this ball game, and an Eric Maximuk field goal would do it. We'll yeah, and we've, we've seen Eric Maximuk make some big kicks in the past a couple years ago in the playoffs, so could be his time to shine. And they're just going to take the ball at their own 35, so they got 35 seconds to try and get it into field goal range for Eric Maximuk. Just when you think you've got it figured out where this thing is headed, another twist. Shuchuk fires it over to the near side for Wojtyla, oh, and Wojtyla is going to run inside, and he gets up to the 46-yard line, and they're going to have to hurry it up and get up on the line. And now you really wonder what Eric Maximik's range truly is in this situation. And Wojtyla is lined up, and yeah, I'm not sure how many extra yards he gained by running inside there. And... Shuchuk is back to pass. He's going to fire it uh -oh. over the middle in heavy traffic, and he was kicked yep. early, and that's an easy call. And I think Isaac Ford is hurt. Yeah, I might got the wind knocked out of him a little bit there because it looked like he took a shot in the ribs. So obviously the good thing is he's getting up. The good thing for the Thunder, they get the first down on the penalty, and the clock holds because of the penalty. So that'll save them a second or two. We'll get another look at it. And that was an easy call for the refs. He's clearly there early. Well, it wasn't or as early was, as I it thought. Was, yeah, but no, it was, it was early. Okanagan, number 39, 15-yard penalty. And again, 39. Down. He's been playing some hard, aggressive defense this game. Um, you know, some. I don't mind that that play. Like, you know, mm -hmm. it, even if you take the penalty, you know, now that's going to maybe uh, slow Ford down a little bit or mm -hmm. get him thinking a little bit, getting his in his head. So they're going to line it up at the 50-yard line, and we've got another stoppage, and this is going to be a timeout, Okanagan. Yeah, not a bad call uh, by Okanagan to take the time to make sure their defense is set, get the guys to uh, take a breath, get a drink of water, and just, you know, just remind them, guys, just do your jobs. You know, that's the big thing here with 20 seconds left in the game. There's only a few plays left. Don't be a superhero. Don't do anything. Don't do somebody else's job. Just do your thing. Eric Maxima. I think that's him with his jacket on down there as he's trying to get loose. So they're definitely thinking field goal. And with 20 seconds left, they've probably got two or three plays before they try a field goal. Three might be pushing it. And Eric Maximuk is getting loose wearing his jacket down at the sideline. But yeah, you wonder because it's the wind, you've got the footing, you've got the, the ball, how hard is the ball? Yeah, I think the ball and the, the wind are probably the two biggest things for sure. Okay, Carter Shuchuk on first and 10 from the 50 yard line. He looks around, he fires over oh the no. middle and that's almost intercepted and it's dropped. It looks like a certain game ending interception and it bounces off the chest of Michael Jordan, the defensive back. And Woodley was wide open. He just ran that slant in between the zones. You can see him there, lots of open space in that window. But the ball by Shuchuk overthrown right into the corner's hands. Down to 16 seconds, and it does stop, keep the, or stop the clock on the incompletion. They fire to the near side, and that's Isaiah Woodley who catches it and steps out of bounds. That does bring up third down, and I'd have to think, yeah, they're going to have to keep going for yeah, you gotta it. Go. Just, yeah, you've got to go. Yeah, because it's too far to kick the field goal, so this is where they just need a first down, something probably along the sidelines to 
I mean, it doesn't matter too much about stopping the clock because on the last play, as long as there's a second on the clock, you can kick with zeros. It's not a big deal. Not like in the south right. of the border. Right, right. Yeah. Different timing rules. So four-man rush, and Shuchuk flips it for, uh, that's Woodley again. Oh, and that's he pinballs short. off one man and another, and he is short, and that's going to be a turnover on downs, and the Okanagan Sun roll into Regina and melt the championship hopes of the Regina Thunder. Well, again, just a, a great defensive play by the Sun. It's what they've been doing all game. It's kind of dropping back into their zone and then reacting up hard on that underneath pattern, that short little crosser. You know, the catch was there. Woodley tried to make something with it, but there's just too many orange jerseys there to bring him down. And, and uh, the, what, is, what was it, a yard? Yard short, I yeah, think? Yeah, I think he's a, a full yard, so. But it was close. The longest yard. And that's what it feels like right now. And Don Britton's just gonna take a knee. He'll have to do it one more time. And that's gonna be all she wrote on the 2022 season. And you can see some some emotions coming out on both sidelines, good and bad. And you can hear that pounding right next to our broadcast booth. And that's the coaching staff of the Okanagan Sun celebrating their third ever national championship. 1998, 2000, and now add 2022 to the record books. For the good folks watching in Kelowna, congratulations, home of Western Canada's best junior football team, I should say Canada's best junior football team in 2022, and they'll be serving up pints into the wee hours of the morning, I'm sure, at that pub in Kelowna. Yeah, just full credit to, to Kelowna for the game, for, for, to Okanagan for the game today, especially the way their defense played in the second half. Totally shut out uh, the Thunder offense. They weren't able to get any points on the board in the second half uh, other than on uh, a safety and on a, a, a punt single, I think it was. Uh, weren't able to get any field goals or touchdowns, so obviously they, they just amped up their game. They dominated the line of scrimmage in the second half on both sides of the ball, which in this kind of weather is going to be crucial for sure and uh, and every coach will tell you that and, and they just did a fantastic job doing that and then the guys in the backfield the linebackers defensive backs on the defense just finished things off and and we saw pay, um uh don Britton making plays with his feet making plays with his arm just a great effort by the sun but uh you know it was a great game we've got a two-point national championship here and, uh, and, you know, like you said, we had a, a lot of fans here and nobody left. It was, it was just a fantastic contest and we've got a winner. We've got the Okanagan Sun 2022 Canadian Bowl champions. And a lot of graduating players from the Regina Thunder as well. And because of the pandemic, we have a lot of guys who are uh, 23 this year and 22. This is the last year that they had it extended for 23 year olds. So 11 graduating players, Isaac Ford, Eric Maximuk, Miles Bisritson, Reed Rabbits, Bobo Kisiseri, Carter Shuchuk, those are all the 23 year olds, but joining them in their last game, for lack of a better term, to die on the battlefield today, Luke Turner, Ryland Sokol, Manier Maijan, I know you coached him at I one point. Manier, yep. yep, and Apit Tuoloma and Nicholas Zimroz. So all of their careers end for the Regina Thunder and um, a tough pill to swallow for them which in the days ahead and months and years will come into perspective and I'm sure they will appreciate just having been been able to be part of this competition uh, but a special moment indeed for the good folks in Kelowna and those men right there down on the field to come in and beat the cold you really have to tip your hat to them and the Thunder gave them all they could handle and I'm sure to a man every one of them will tell us after that they never had a fight like they had all season like they had in Regina this afternoon. Yeah, no question. You know, we know the Thunder have had a very tough season. They've had, they've got some really tough, hard-fought wins where they had to come from behind and, and have so much composure and mental toughness. As we heard the president of Okanagan at halftime get interviewed, like the, the average spread of score that Okanagan had this year was huge. They hardly had any games that, that were less than, or that were more than a one score game. 32 points. Or sorry, less. Uh, yeah. <coughs> to, 
Le 32. Less than a one-score game, I should say. Yeah, thir 32 points, the average spread for Okanagan, blowout after blowout all year long. Yeah, so when they were down in the first half, you kind of wonder, okay, well, are they going to fold their tents because they, they don't know how to come back? They don't know how to top out a game like this? But they showed their character. They showed that they can do it, and they did do it. And uh, we will go to our in-house feed right now for the trophy presentation. Congratulations to the Prairie Conference champion Regina Thunder on an outstanding season. But the champions of the Canadian Junior Football League for the first time since 2000 are the Okanagan Sun. Better announce the players of the game. First of all, the special teams player of the game presented by BC Conference President Tyler McLaren. Going to number 11 for the Okanagan Sun, Mike O'Shea. Come on up here, Mike. This is the first time a team from BC has come into the prairies and won since 2008. to call upon Randy O'Shaughnessy, the president of the Prairie Conference, to hand out the defensive player of the game to number 49 of the Okanagan Sun, Dawson Puck. Dawson, come on up here. Congratulations. Congratulations, Dawson. And now to the offensive player of the game, Mark Holder from the, from the Ontario Conference to present that. To Okanagan Sun running back number 26, Javon Garwood. And now we'll ask upon the captains of the Okanagan Sun to come meet CGFL Commissioner Jim Pekovic to receive the 114th Canadian Bowl. Congratulations to the Okanagan Sun. The sun shining brightly over the Okanagan Valley today and for the Okanagan Sun in Regina and all these fans who came in on the charter and a few others traveling from west of the Rocky Mountains to the prairies. That's dedication to do that in November and the sun pulled it out as you see them posing with the championship trophy there will be no bigger accomplishment for many of these athletes than what they're celebrating right now and that picture says it all if a picture's worth a thousand words that one might be worth about 10 million right now what a special moment and what a story as we go down to our sideline reporter, Blaine Wyland, who I believe is with Okanagan head coach, Travis Miller. We're just getting him ready. A little chaotic if you've ever been in the middle of a championship <laughs> celebration trying to conduct a live interview. We'll get Blaine on here momentarily as I look down in that mess of people, but what a cool scene this is. 
I mean, it's a it's a huge experience. It's a huge opportunity to win at home, but it's pretty special and unique to win on the road. You know, the the fans that made the trip here from Okanagan and from other places in Canada to support the Sun, you know, they're going to remember this. Uh, the road trip home is going to be so much better uh, because they're going home with the win. Okay, we'll go live to Blaine Wyland, who is with Javon Garwood, the winning running back for the Okanagan Sun. Blaine? Hey, Javon. It seemed like the, your touchdown was the big trade point. Do you think so? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm so I'm so happy right now. I don't know how to ex explain it, man. It's just a good, great feeling for 22 years, man. And this is my last year, so it feels amazing. Does it make it any sooner that you guys came from behind and on the road as well? Um, I'm so I don't know. How to, I'm, <laughs> I'm so nervous. I don't know how to say it. I don't know what to say. Congratulations, obviously, but uh, is it just indescribable? That's it, just, just it. Pardon? Is it just indescribable right now? Um, I mean, right now I feel amazing. My whole team, we went and got this done, right? So it's good. Is it every, what do you think is going to set in that you guys won the, the Canadian Bowl here in Regina? Pardon? Today? When do you think it's going to set in that you won the Canadian Bowl here today? I don't know. It's a great feeling. I mean, I don't know what to explain. Just right now, it's amazing. It feels good. All right. Well, Coach Silver, congratulations. Thank you so much. All right. All right. Well, we'll catch Coach in a second. You will never see more raw motion than in that interview right there. And uh, if there's... If there's ever any doubt, um, it was erased right there. And I think we have Blaine set up now with Travis Miller. Or maybe not. Okay, just let, uh, we'll get him set. And you can see the celebration continue. We'll go live to Blaine with Coach Miller right now. Again, it's very chaotic after. It's obviously with the situation when you win the championship. What do you think was the difference for you guys today? Uh, you know what? Our, our team has been dialed in all, all season. I don't know if there was a difference between those two teams. It's a three-point game. That's what you want in a Canadian Bowl or two or three-point game. That was an awesome opportunity to play. Describe the feeling of the fact that you guys came from behind, especially in that third quarter being down by 10. Man, we, we faced adversity all season long. All season long, we faced adversity, different games, found ways to overcome it. Just so happens we, we finished it off, man. Just talk about uh, what it means for the program to come here, be the first BC team to win on the Prairies. It's been 22 years, and, and you know what? We, we were number one all season, but we never counted ourselves that way until today. And today we can honestly say we were the number one team from the number one conference. Feels great. All right, congratulations. Thanks a lot. Thank you so much. All right, we'll, take a, we'll send it back up. Okay, and there's head coach Travis Miller, who, like Scott McCauley in his first year as head coach, wins a national championship here in Regina. McCauley winning it in 2013 um, while over on Taylor Field, and this is the first championship here at Mosaic Stadium. So that's pretty cool. This Okanagan Sun team can always say they won the first national championship at beautiful Mosaic Stadium. Still largely believed to be the standard bearer of great football facilities in this great nation. We're going to hear from a few more uh, Okanagan Sun players. And uh, boy, that's just raw emotion from everybody, every which way down there. Nothing scripted. That's just legit feelings coming out. Well, especially to listen to Javon Garwood. Like, you know, he said 22 years. You know, he's a 22-year-old young man but he was like an eight-year-old kid on Christmas morning, just so excited. Thought I was going to cry listening to that. Now we'll <laughs> send it down. Uh, Blaine Wyland is with the defensive player of the game. Uh, a couple outstanding plays by Dawson Puck. Blaine? All right, Dawson, congratulations. Canadian Bowl champions. Can you put it into words right now? Not the right ones, that's for sure. Uh, bottom line is this is a special team. Take a look around you back there. Special team, special guys. Man. No words, no words at all. Special. That's what happens when you have a special team that's bought in from before the season till this moment right here. That, that's it. That's all I got to say. What was the difference for you guys in the third quarter when you made that comeback down by 10? We just know. We, we've, we faced adversity all year, whether it's on the field or off the field. We went into the locker room. We, we go into the locker room every halftime is 0-0, and it's a new game. We simply won the second half. What do you think is going to hit that you guys won the game today? Probably after we could recover from a couple hangovers in a couple days. All right, congratulations. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, guys. All right, we'll take a quick break. No filter. I love it. And uh, I know we're going we're gonna to have one more interview here as uh, just some great pictures. And I just can't thank our access crew enough for all the work. And uh, Blaine, the work doing being down on the sideline, he deserves a double time and a half in these weather conditions. We were whining and complaining up here in the booth that we've got a window open. Well, he's out there exposed right to the wind. 
and uh, this is just awesome watching all of these shots and uh, this is just the time of their lives and some of these guys will go on to bigger better things football wise there's not a doubt in my mind some of these gentlemen will play pro football at the CFL level um, many of them will not but will all fondly remember and this team will be together forever because they won a national title here in Regina and the amount of you have to give those fans just a ton of credit to come in uh, for this championship game and they just look happy to be here right from opening kickoff it looked like a tailgate party watching the lineup at the the gate and people waiting to get in at noon this was a one o'clock kickoff and they were trying to get as much of this game in under the sun as they could which i think was a good call on the part of the organizers and the organizing committee but uh just a great week but your heart really does go out to the regina thunder because they gave it all they had and uh it just didn't quite come, but we'll send it down to Blaine Weiland one more time, who's with the quarterback of the Okanagan Sun, the championship winner, Dom Britton. Blaine? All right, I'm joining Dom, your quarterback of the Canadian Bowl, 2022 Canadian Bowl champions. How does it feel? Unreal, man. Yeah, it's really unreal. Hard fog game, a long season, 10 game regular season, four, four posts, so it feels good. Does it even feel even sweeter the fact you guys came from behind like you guys did in that second half. Yeah, you know, it's, we've, we've done it multiple times this season. We've come out slow, and we always we always rally together. We're super, super close bond, everyone, and we just build each other up. What do you think was the big difference this afternoon? Uh, just heart, really. I think we wanted it more. It was a like pretty pretty even match. A lot of big hits for them, a lot of big hits for, for us, a lot of big plays either, either side, but just came down to who wanted it. And what do you think is going to hit that you guys won the, the Canadian Bowl today? Sorry, what was that? What do you think is going to hit that you guys won the Canadian Bowl today? I don't know yet. It's uh, <laughs> pretty surreal right now, yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. All right, I'll send it back. And that shot of Keegan Hines wearing number 52, pretty cool shot as well. And uh, boy, I thought he summed it up there. He said, I felt like at the end of the day, we just wanted it more, but um, it's not, uh, what, how does the line go? It's not the team with the best players the players on the best team. Just a wonderful way to wrap up the 2022 football season. This has been fun. It's been a lot of fun. This has been a great time, and I just want to thank everybody on our crew, our spotter, Ryan Wilson. I want to thank Cal Fear. I want to thank our uh, producer, engineer, Graham Condo, Ryan Hall, and everybody else on the entire Access crew today and this entire season and thank you to the Regina Thunder for another amazing campaign and once again congratulations to Kelowna and the Okanagan Valley home of Canada's best junior football team in 2022.